back with both our debaters. Hey, why don't we just take a second and uh, Ben Thorpe, introduce yourself. Let them know where I can find you. Thanks, Pedro. My name is Ben Thorpe. Um, I have a little YouTube channel called Ben Thorpe, the same as my title at AKA Able, um, where I've I've collected a few memes from my, I just started a kind of experience on the internet of uh, interacting with a, a community called the Jim Bob community. Uh, I'm starting this to live stream a series about that interaction. It's called The Thorpocalypse and Analysis. And the first part of that series starts tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Love to have anyone come over. I also have provisionally a commitment from E. Michael Jones to debate me on the topic of is the Gospel of John anti-Jewish and also from Posh Redneck to debate Roman Catholicism versus Eastern Orthodoxy. Can the split be healed? Gotcha. Thank you for that. Andrew, this is your home, but still, I think you should give some words of wisdom. Shout out to everybody. You're muted. You're definitely muted. Sorry about that. Just got home from work, right? So just readjusting here in the studio. One of my lights went out. I didn't have a chance to uh, change the bulb. Anyway, my name is Andrew Wilson. I'm the owner of The Crucible. Um, hoping that I'll enjoy this debate. I don't have a lot of hope that I will. <laughs> Mr. Thorpe has been pestering me about it for several days nonstop. But we'll see when, uh, when you know, it meets the mesh how he does. Go ahead. Gotcha. All right, sir. So since you were the challenger, Ben, you get the first opening statement. Uh, you're going to get seven minutes. So whenever you're ready, sir. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I thought I'd lead off today our, our topic that uh, I think we agreed on is in today's political climate, people should, one, pers pursue conspiracy theories less, and two, respect proper authority more. And I'm taking the affirmative on that. So I thought we'd start by talking about today's news. Uh, the Queen of England died this morning. And of course, here you have uh, the perfect locus of conspiracy theories and authority. And uh, I'm, I'm actually wearing black today. It's my little tribute to uh, the Queen of England, though I am not a subject. Um, but I also I also had the interesting experience of going on the live stream that that is, you know, brought about the Thorpocalypse. And I saw there that the um, intro was Something like, hey, the queen, you know, I heard, oh, the queen died. Isn't she a child eater? I guess we should say, um, rest, God, may God rest her soul in peace. And then, uh, uh, actually, you know, she's probably been dead for years. Don't you guys know that? So that kind of little snippet, I think, is a good introduction to what I think the problem here is. And the problem, I think, is what we have here is a problem of authority, right? Who do we trust? And, you know, what do we kind of question? And I think this is an historical problem, which uh, we've been dealing with in the West since the split between Eastern Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism back around 1054. It was exacerbated by uh, the Protestant revolt or the Protestant Reformation, whatever you want to call it, in uh, 1517. It was further exacerbated by the French Revolution. And there have been revolutions since then, the Russian Revolution, uh, Bloody Revolution, World War II, uh, most recently, um, the sexual revolution in the 1960s. And people have lost a sense of what is proper authority? Who can I trust? And the danger of that is that we can descend into uh, a kind of, you know, where we don't trust anyone, a, uh, we, I would call it epistemological nihilism that, you know, we, what can we trust? And I think it's our task, especially for younger people who I know are watching the show, um, to really try to regain that trust because we don't really have an alternative to that. And while conspiracy theories, theories can be interesting, they can also lead us to a kind of spiral where we lose touch with reality. And so I think it is time for us to pursue conspiracy, conspiracy theories less and respect proper authority more. And I think one example of that is, is today. I think that as a human being, 
a fellow human being, we should save our conspiracy stuff today and pay respects to the Queen of England, who, whatever you might think of her, spent 70 years in the limelight and lived a very, very difficult life and tried to maintain dignity when the world was sort of falling apart and her personal family was sort of falling apart and continues to. That's my statement. Thank you for that, sir. Andrew, whenever you're ready, I'll reset the clock on my side. No need. I'll yield my time. Perfect. All right. Who wants to shoot yeah, I'll the go first, I'll question go first off. if you don't. I'll go sure. for it first if you don't sure. mind. Uh, ben, why should I trust you? Can you give me a one good solid reason why I should? Yeah, I, um, this is the problem that came up uh, on the live stream community. My name is Ben Thorpe. Um, I can tell you about where I live. Um, but you should trust me because I'm another human being uh, until I tell you something that doesn't. Do you tell your children that they should trust, trust strangers, Ben? Especially adult males, like if they're walking alone in the park, your young children. Do you tell them that they should trust adult male men because they, you know, their fellow human beings, Ben? Uh, I would I would say you have to be careful, but uh, when they go to school, well, why wait? Why would they have to be careful? Those are fellow human beings, Ben. Uh huh. Yeah, that you just said that the criteria and qualification for why I should trust you is because you're a fellow human being. I but you're not you a to... child, Andrew, are you? Well, wait a second, though. Now the qualification is adults should trust adults. Is that I the think qualification? That's generally, I think that's generally true. Okay, so not children. So children shouldn't just trust everybody, right? Uh, children should trust their parents to tell mm -hmm. them who to trust. So what about low IQ adults? Should they trust anybody? Or should they be very cautious about who they trust? I think that people with very low IQ should be taken care of by their parents or an authority. Well, I mean, um, what if it's not so low that you can't function, but it's so low that it's very easy for you to be taken advantage of? Should those people have trust issues? Should they be very cautious? For instance, let's say you have a low IQ woman who's like 19 or 20, she just uh, struck out on her own. Yeah. Well, she could be taken advantage of by adult males pretty easy, couldn't she, Ben? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually, if you want to talk about young Well, females. no, Ben, Ben, I don't want an anecdote. Don't give a shit about your anecdotes. I want to know, should a 20-year-old woman who's maybe not that bright and just struck out on her own just trust every man who comes into her life because they're fellow human beings? Uh, I think that she should trust her father until she gets married and then trust so her husband. She shouldn't just trust strangers married. that she doesn't know. That's not a good idea, Ben. As an adult, I think she can trust people at the grocery store who are checking out her groceries. You don't think that a lot of men who are hyper predator would take advantage of like a beautiful 20 year old who didn't have like a lot of experience in the world and maybe was low IQ? I think that adults, male and female, have to negotiate the world, and hopefully they've been prepared to do so by uh, their formation. But I, uh, but I recognize that we live in a low trust society, and there are reasons. No, well, why. but but there's reasons that you have a, a a low trust society, right? I agree with you. I so the question the question becomes towards. is why should I trust you? You say I should trust you because you're a fellow human being. But when we look at qualifiers that aren't me and aren't you, suddenly nobody should fucking trust anybody. Why shouldn't you trust me? I'm why on a live stream. What, well, what, what do you is mean? The threat why you? should I? Why, why I? shouldn't you is the question I'm asking. Well, no, you can't ask me to define for you why I ought to do something. That's your what? ought statement. Why ought I trust you, Ben? Yeah, and I'm saying why ought you not trust me? That's not, uh, literally, that's a fallacy. You're asking me that's to define That's a fallacy? That statement is a fallacy? You're asking me to define, you know, to define a negative for you. I can't tell you why I ought not do things. Right. This is I, I your, your, you. your prescription is I need to trust you. You don't need to trust me. OK, well, then that's, the end, of that portion of, that, I'm another then that's the end of that portion of the debate, unless you want to tell me why I should trust you. This is actually not the topic of the debate, whether you should trust me. Then why did you bring it up in your opening statement? What did I bring up? You brought up that I should trust you. you uh, my point is you should trust people in authority. More, uh, you should, you should, sit, not you personally, but that young people should uh, tr try to find good sources of authority, I think, within their families, within their church, uh, within society and in the world. I, I think that uh, the... You think, uh, you think more altar boys should trust more priests, Ben? I think altar boys, generally speaking, should trust priests. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. 
but should I don't get, think that parents should they get close to them. <laughs> should they get close to their free spin? Like, come on, man. At what point are you going to use your reason here? You can't have uh, a decadent. You can't have a decadent. Andrew, society. I think I've been being reasonable, and I think you've have been coming a at decadent, this debate hey, uh, ben, in a, an extremely hostile way, and I just don't understand why. You can't have. I'm a here to debate a topic with you, and I'm you're trying just to trying to manhandle it. me. When you get when you get into the realm of having a society that's completely and totally decadent and without yeah. morals and degenerate, and then you come in and say have high trust, that's absurd. You I'm would have to, to re, have you would have to reforge. I know it's difficult. You I have understand to reforge that it's the difficult. entire face of society in order to bring what you call a high trust society where I could just trust some stranger on the internet to give I'm, him my phone number, call him, and say good morning to him. Well, I, I don't know about the internet. I mean, but I, I think, for example, having a guest like me on your show is something that is not a threat to you. I was on a show. I was portrayed, I was immediately because I wasn't exactly like everybody else. I was, uh, you know, suspected of being a Hollywood or a media hitman, a maybe you uh, are. Maybe informant. you are, Ben. Yeah, maybe anyone's anything. But my point that's is, right. that, that's right. That's the theory. That, hang on, maybe they are, and maybe that's why we shouldn't be so quick to trust other people, Ben. Well, then why are you on the internet if you don't want to meet people and hear their ideas? Isn't that the purpose of this? Why channel? does that require trust? It requires a little bit of trust why? because you put me on your channel and I give you credit for that. Why does that require trust? Isn't that your point? Uh, why should you trust me? I think you should trust me, you know, that I don't think it's really it could possibly be a threat to you. Why? But you could be a threat to somebody somewhere. You could be a threat. I mean, I have no idea. I don't know anything about you. Why sure, anyone should... could be a threat well, to well, anyone. So the question becomes, why should you be trusted? Your answer is because you should. You should trust me only so far as you get to know me and learn about me. But I'm not an authority in your life. Andrew. Thank you, I'm... Ben. Now we can move on. I completely agree, right, with that point that I should only trust people after I get to know them, yeah. get to understand what they're about, start right. to have knowledge of them. Otherwise, right. I probably shouldn't be so quick to trust them, should I? I don't think you should be super quick to trust people. That's why I yeah. asked you if we could talk on the phone and you could get to know me. But yeah, so, so maybe the so. first, maybe don't open the next conversation with somebody who literally talks to hundreds of people a week with, here's my phone number, call me. That might give them the wrong impression, Ben. I gave you my phone number. Yeah, that might give them the wrong impression, Ben. What's the wrong impression? The wrong impression is that maybe uh, you have some nefarious purpose for why you would just ask random people to give you a call. I had a, I told you what my purpose was. I wanted to come on this channel. Yeah, but you know, people lie. And since I don't know anything about you, I have no reason to believe you're not lying to me or that you're telling me the truth. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You don't have to believe that I am Ben Thorpe, that I live in Rhode Island, that I have six kids. Okay. I mean, well, then I... Ben, then Ben, then I won't until demonstrated otherwise. And that seems totally uh, okay. fair. And okay, that's exactly I... where trust comes in. Now, okay, back so, to the topic so you, of conspiracy. Let's just so you start with the suspicion that I am a federal agent, that I am a Hollywood reporter or a producer, that I work for the CIA, and that I'm possibly a demonic man. Did I say any of those things? No, I'm just saying that's where it went to in four Well, did days. I say any of those things? I don't think, well, I, I don't, you're saying I start with Did suspicion. I say any of those things, Ben? You said, I will not trust you. Did I say anything Until about you, you being a reporter ones. or a federal agent or anything like no, that? No, I don't man? think you think that's well. Correct. Then that's called think a anybody straw, thinks that's, that's called a straw man. So you only can attribute my positions to me. I didn't say any of those things to you. Have all I, I said, been hostile? To all you? I said, and that you have I been with, hostile to you? Andrew? All I said, and the only thing that you agreed with thus far, and we both can come to terms that this is true, is that I absolutely shouldn't trust you until I get to know you. Would you say okay. that I've gotten to know you? Okay, I would say that you should have come onto this stream with a little bit of respect for me because I have you have no cause to be disrespectful of me, and I'm your elder, I believe, and I think well, wait, that wait, you should back, have wait, some back respect. Up. Back up. Yeah. Uh, sure. How how exactly have I been disrespectful to you? You don't think you've exhibited a, an enormous amount of hostility towards me? No, I'm just an aggressive debater, Ben. You're the one who demanded I debate with you, so here I am debating. I this is how I this anything. is how I do it, Ben. It's not this how is, you do it. You're a very generous debater, but for some there's reason, different styles. There's different styles that different people use. Well, why don't you aggressively debate the topic? Instead well, of, I just tried you know, to steer us back to the topic. So if you'd like to get back on the topic of conspiracies, can you tell me what a conspiracy is? 
Yeah, if you want to define the terms, I think conspiracy theories kind of are, are theories that there is a secret plan which explains, you know, what's going on in the world. Something you don't think along that those there are lines. Secret plans that explain things that are going on in the world, Ben. I, I think there are. There are sometimes. There have been conspiracy theories that were true. I'm just saying the problem. Then, they, then they're not theories. They're conspiracy truths. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said some. Right. Okay. So which ones do you think are untrue, and why? Why shouldn't we believe them? Well, I, I, that's not about that. I, 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 the topic was not which conspiracies theories are true. The, my my point is, and I'm not trying to be hostile to you, Andrew. I'm just saying I think it's an important topic. I understand how especially younger people, but really our whole world has gotten confused as to who we can trust. And I think we need to be able to trust authorities beyond ourselves, because if we make ourselves the pope, of our own, you know, that we are the, 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 you know, we're God and what I think about is true, is true. We get lost and it's a very dangerous cycle. I'm not saying that you're on that cycle. I'm not saying that Jim Bob is on that cycle. I just think I see stuff that, it, it, you know, it, it concerns me. And I think we should take a kind of step back and realize that to, uh, you know, I would say just bad mouth the Queen of England on her death. I see it all over the Internet. There's all these people saying all this stuff about her. And, you know, it just seems to me like that, that that's a that's a nihilistic path. I'm not saying you can't. I mean, it sounds you know, pretty patriotic to me. I don't know if you're aware of this, but are you aware that we fought a war against England for the independence of the United States and that yeah. many people take that very seriously, take their patriotism very seriously. Right. And they're not all that upset when the lineage of that sovereign passes away. They don't right. feel like uh, that's maybe the the thing that Americans, which is what we are, should really give two shits about. Do you really see a problem with that? Fine. You, you can profane the name of the Queen of England all you want. Uh, no one's going to stop you. I just think it's ugly. And I think that, you know, the founding fathers did have respect for the monarchs of England, although they broke, right, which is why they spread satire all over the place of, of them being like lynch mobbed and beaten to death and every other thing in between because they were fighting a war with them. But that aside, I'll, I'll, I'll concede this one point. It isn't bad taste when anybody dies I appreciate to dance that. on their grave. Right. right. So we'll I'll give it a day at least. So right? I'll agree with that. But back hmm. to the topic at hand, which is authority, trusting authority. Right. Should I trust scientific authority. Uh, yeah, right. This is the problem. Some people say, well, trust the science, right? And uh, I am science and these kind of things. And this has been a confusing thing over the last couple of years. I know we don't want to go there, but yeah, no, uh, I, I do want to go there, which is why I asked. So if oh, okay. you're saying if you're saying, Andrew, we need to have authorities that we trust, not yeah. conspiracy theories. Yeah. I need to know which authorities I should be putting my faith in. Should it and be let the me scientific community? And, and let me say, there are conspiracies on the left and the right. I'm not just <laughs> picking on the right and in the middle. I, I, I believe it's I'm not picking on people on the right and I'm not unsympathetic with them. You're not but, really answering yeah, my question, man. Yeah, sure. OK, so are there scientific uh, are, is the scientific community often biased? Yes. Yes. There's politics that go into what you can and can't say as a scientist. Right. That's true. So should I trust scientific authority or not? Uh, I think generally speaking, we, we trust experts. Um, if, 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 uh, if I have a question about my house, I, I ask a, an engineer and I would trust him until I see some reason not to. Until you see some reason not to. And do you right. think that people have seen a lot of reason not to maybe trust these so-called authorities? I do. I do. do. But I, all I'm saying is I don't think it's as simple as saying, well, I don't trust anyone, you know, because that's that's kind of leaves you. Uh, without any kind of nobody's position um, is not to trust anyone. I think it, it it often does when when there's a certain kind of conspiracy. Whose, whose position thing. is don't trust anyone ever with anything? I've never heard well, such a thing in my life. Whose position is that? I would say um, I could give you an example of someone whose position that was. And yeah, please can, do. If I can pull it up, I can't. Yeah, take your time, Ben. I'm sorry. Um, I just just before okay here it is, it, just before I got on the um, the stream here, I uh, received a comment on a comment that I made about uh, Queen Elizabeth, and it said as a, this person wrote as a person who had military 
grade energy slash mind control weapons used on me just for believing, quote, conspiracy theories and was targeted for death, given COVID on purpose via a throat swab, gang stalked by citizens to drive me crazy for five years. No, we should not respect authority and stop believing conspiracies because ironically, whether they were satanic murderers, they became that by what they did to me. And I'm assuming others pretty sure I'm not the only one. I don't think the people or creatures who did that, who did what they did to to me, did it for free. I believe the government paid them and is exactly what conspiracy theorists say they are and worse, and people should listen to whistleblowers. Now, that's a person I would say who has a, is mentally ill, and I'm did not it, saying... Can you, I, I'm sorry. I didn't see anywhere in the entirety of that comment him saying not to trust anybody ever. You think this is a person who has a reasonable amount of trust? I, no, that's not what I said. What did I I'm say? I'm saying this is where... I need you to repeat back what I just said. Creatures are attacking me. Nope, stop. I need you to repeat back what I just said, Ben. I, I you said repeat something about back trust. what I just said about trust. What's my I, position I here? I need you to tell me my own position here. Can you do uh, that? I, I I can't remember it because you started. You can't. Me. You can't remember. You can't remember my position. Let me tell you my position one more time, Ben. Sure, my position. Andrew, but you is could that be respectful. Also, my position. I'm sorry. You, know, you can it, be a is little it hurting respectful. your feelings. Take, take I'm, a step I'm sorry. back. Take a Calm down, Karen. Fresh air. Karen. Calm down, Karen. I'm trying. I'm trying this to. This is talk what I'm talking here. about. It's I'm trying to know, talk to you here. Do you think it looks good for you to behave like this? Go ahead. Can you repeat? If you can't repeat back my position, I'm going to tell you one more time what my position is. That I don't I can't think... repeat your position back to you, Andrew. That's correct. Okay. So one more time, my position is I don't think that there's people who are running around saying not to trust anybody. I think there are people saying right. that. And so and when I, think... I asked you to demonstrate that, you couldn't, though. I, I gave you a demonstration of someone who's running around saying the government is attacking us and demons are attacking us and we shouldn't but didn't trust say anyone. not to trust any no never that never happened and anywhere in the comment did it say not to trust it <laughs> it said i it said we can't trust the government because they're, they're that's paying not well that's not that's very over different five years and Bro, they're trying to murder listen, us listen <laughs> i need you to understand this yeah okay. anyone is different than this group of people. Do you think it's fair, and you've already said that it's fair for me to say something like, maybe I don't trust scientism. You conceded and said, sure, yeah. that's true. Sure. Isn't that a way more, isn't that a totally different statement than don't trust anyone, don't you think? Do you I think that these two things are synonymous? You, you're the one who was kind of saying, I shouldn't trust you. Which you're is, the one who's filled with suspicion bro. for some reason. Do you do you agree that those are two totally different and things? I, and I don't think you should call me bro, but you can, but I don't think you should call me bro. I think it's disrespectful. That's what we're talking about. Okay, well, about. I'm sorry you feel so disrespected, but please answer my question. That's more snark. You know, why can't you just be respectful? I don't, you think you're winning the debate by being unbelievably hostile to me? Are you going to answer my question or are you just going to mule? Like, what do you, what do you want to do here? Okay. Like all you've been doing is complaining and whining this entire time. Just answer the question. Okay. Tell me your question again. Don't you think it's a different statement to say, I don't trust this group of people versus I don't trust anybody anywhere. Yes. That's a different, th those are two different statements. Yes. So when I give you my position and you conflate it by constantly saying, well, this guy said, don't trust this group of people. That really doesn't conflate that, it. You that, said that you don't that, trust science. Stop, I said, stop, I said for good reason. Stop Ben. <laughs> okay. okay. Try and tell no you problem. again, you're conflating these two very different uh, concepts. These two very different things. My position is not that it's not okay to not trust certain groups of people or not trust the government or not trust science. My position is just simply that I have not been hearing anybody run around saying that you shouldn't trust anybody ever. And that was your statement. Okay. So this is a debate about whether I'm saying that you are saying that there are people running around saying no one should trust anyone ever. I, that's not the debate. No, My point, is, it's a, it's a matter of degree. This it, is a it, debate it, where our positions need to be completely understood. We agreed to our positions. You're arguing that we should cons should not pursue conspiracy theories less and respect proper authority more. Right. I guess a way of saying that is you're saying we should. So I'm asking who the proper authority is. Who are the proper authorities? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. I actually I actually made a little whiteboard, if I can get my daughter to bring it over. Grace? <laughs> um, I believe, what are the proper authorities? I think, first and foremost, the authority is God. I think under God are religious and secular authorities, uh, proper authorities, including um, 
you know, the, the temporal powers as well as the spiritual power. In my case, as a Catholic, I believe that's the Pope. I think the hierarchy descends to, uh, you know, the state level here in America. And the, there we have a bishop. I have it all written here. Um, to, to the governor of a state and the local bishop. And then on a local level, the local priest and the mayor. And within a family, I believe that the father should be the authority under him, the mother, and beneath him, the children. It's a hierarchical system. I believe this is just a traditional Catholic view of who you should trust. Now, are all of these people, except for God, fully trustworthy? No, they're human beings. You, you can question them. But I, I think when we make it just me making decisions for myself and distrusting all of these people, having a tendency to distrust all of these people, I think you run into the problem that you become uh, lost in a kind of, you know, if you don't trust anyone, then where are you getting your, your sources from, right? And it can get ugly. Running People running around in Connecticut demanding that the, the families of the children who died there exhume their kids' bodies so that they can prove to them that that wasn't a hoax is where we've lost touch with reality. I believe that's true. And you've got a camera there. And then, of course, if they did exhume the body, they would say, oh, that's a really, you know, that's a really fancy government op, right? Let's do a DNA test. But then they would have to take that to a lab and then go, oh, see, yeah, the lab is right. You understand what I'm saying? There's a problem with a lack of trust. And I'm saying I understand that we're all in this position, but there's no simple solution of just saying, well, I'm going to do my own research. I'm going to go on a, a very very narrow website of people who agree with these things and start asking really, you know, questions that may lead to like a, a, a massive kind of mind uh, confusion that leads to the type of, uh, you know, that comment that I received where someone is saying, you know, they're out to get me. They're, they're, they've got drones. I don't know. You know, it, 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 right. That's a possibility, right? Uh, that the whole explanation was so incoherent, I could barely keep up with it. I'm I'm serious. I really I was I'm having a struggle uh, struggling to keep up with this. That's why so I made the whiteboard. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna pull that whiteboard up so that I can see it better. Okay. Gonna, I'll try to be good faith because I don't want you to whine that I wasn't being that I was being too mean <laughs> or whatever. It's okay. Okay. In today's political climate, uh, that's just want, the topic. Okay. So we're gonna start with God, right? Right. And right. then we're moving over to the Pope. And, and can I just say one thing about God? There was a double rainbow over Buckingham Palace today. Now, what that means, I don't know, but it was remarkable. I don't give a shit, Ben. I want to talk about the chart. So let's talk well, about the Pope. Saying. So we're going, moving over to the Pope. Why should I trust the Pope? Why should you trust the Pope? Yeah. Well, should you, I believe you're Orthodox, right? Yeah. Okay. I know that, that you don't trust the Pope, but you must trust. Yeah, but him. why should I trust him? Should I trust the Pope? Well, I'll tell you why I trust the Pope, because I believe that he's the successor of Peter. That, though, I don't care if you trust him. Should I trust him? I think that you should trust your uh, religious leader. And I think that I think that. Uh, should I trust the Pope or not, Ben? Just answer the question. Yes or no. Should I, I or think shouldn't I? Okay, I don't think you're... A, I think in a way, yes. In a way, no. Well, I, what the fuck does that mean? Should I trust him or not trust him, Ben? Well, I'm not a subject of the Queen of England, right? And you pointed that out. Uh, but I think that... So I, I, so I would say, should I love the Queen of England? I think yes, but also I think... Right? So I understand as an Orthodox, you're split from Rome, and I, I don't think... I don't know how you'd be orthodox and also trust the Pope. I understand this is a problem for your community. Um, ben, ben, I'm not asking about how my community operates. I'm not asking about what is going on in my community. I'm not asking about any of that. I'm asking a very simple question. Sure. Should I trust the Pope? Uh, yeah, I think so. I you think, think so. I should trust? Now, can you tell me why you think I should trust the Pope? Because I think he is the successor of Peter, but I understand why you have trouble seeing that. Although I don't think the Orthodox deny that. Okay. He's the bishop. Of okay, Rome. hang on. Just chill out for a second, man, <laughs> so that we can try to make some progress here. Because I actually got an answer to the question, which was great. <laughs> so you're saying that... Let's I, be friends, Andrew. Let's be friends. So you're Let's saying talk. that I ought trust the Pope, right? 
I think that yes. Yes. Okay. So moving on, does that mean that I ought trust Catholic bishops? Yeah, I, I do believe that the Catholic Church is the one true church. Uh, I, I don't think that means you should trust in an just, unlimited I don't, way. I don't, I don't need the qualifiers. Just, yes, I should trust the bishops? Yes. Okay, should I trust then your local priests? Yes. So does that mean that I should then trust your mother and father as well? Well, you're not in my family. Well, you well, should trust wait, your whoa, whoa, Wait a second. You should trust your this, father. Hang on. I'm looking at your chart. What's your chart start with? I don't know what that means. Up here? God? Yeah. What's it start with? God. And then Pope, then Bishop, then local priest. And then well, it's got mother. a split, right? And then, then your mother and father. But we should be able to read that backwards too, right? First trust your father and mother, then local priest and Bishop, then Pope, then God, right? I think you should trust your father. Should I trust your father? Uh, I mean, not not especially. No, not any more so, than. But I else. should trust your pope. <laughs> it's not my pope. It's your pope. It's our pope. Well, right? no, this I mean, is it's, the your, it's your pope, right? And I ought. Well, trust you have him. your own pope. So no. I mean, we're just. I'm just trying to go through your line of, of logic here. So let's move up the left side. Well, let me go through your line of logic. Okay, let's go through mine. Don't you have a similar hierarchy? Yeah, but I'm not telling you what you ought do. You're not telling me what I ought do? No. But I'm asking you, do you or do you not trust religious authorities? Do I trust my do I trust my own religious authorities? Yeah, do many you? of them. Good. Good. And many of them I don't trust. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that we trust everyone here in an unlimited way. Of course, Andrew. Right? Okay, great. I mean, so now moving up the left side of the list. We're but if start... we get rid of, if you didn't have those authorities mm -hmm. to trust and it was just okay, you, okay, just, dude, chill then out. it's a problem. Chill out. <laughs> I just, just trying to walk through this so that I get the mindset down. Okay. okay. So going up the left side, we're going to start with your mother and father again, and then we're going to move on to the mayor. I should trust the mayor. I think you should. Yes. I, I believe that. Basically, if you're in a town, you should trust the mayor. I'm not saying, well, okay, yes, yes. If the mayor says we're doing this, I would And then trust that him. means uh, your next logical leap up is I should trust the governor? Yeah. And then I should trust a king or a president after that? Yeah, I think that we should try our best to, and if there is mistrust, work it out. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So... Yeah. I, I think the only I think okay, you know this. Hang on, now go I ahead, got go I got your list. I've got your list down. Can you tell me why I should start by trusting the mayor? Because he would know the answers if there's a question that you have. He would be the first person who you'd go to to say what's going on in my town. Now he might lie, but normally speaking, you would say, "Okay, yeah, uh, you know, he he has an explanation, and he would know because he's at." meetings where things are discussed discussed yeah right so the first that. person you go to if you have a question about what's going on in your town is the mayor no but i mean if you look then at why the did you just say that that's the first person you'd go to in the town if you wanted to know an answer to a question ben uh i mean if you look in the newspaper and the mayor said this is what's happening or this is what happened that that would be the source yeah okay so you and, then, say, and then why should i trust the governor uh, for the same reasons. Because if I had a question about my town? <laughs> well, they have competency. Oh, right? competency. In other words, they, they have access to the people who would know the answers to these questions. Now, are they always trustworthy? Not necessarily, but I think your first impulse would be to say, if the governor said X, that that, that person would know more than some guy you know, who lives next door, who, who has a, you know, some kind of other angle, like what's really going on here is whatever. Okay. Yeah, I do think. Yeah. Don't you, you think that? Don't well, you think that? Well, when we had, uh, when we had lockdowns recently, yeah. did you, would you say that those lockdowns instilled a lot of faith and competency in the governor of Michigan? I, I, I think that, yeah, I, I, I think those, those things were handled poorly. But so, I, but I so also what's the answer? Do you think that 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 I should have trusted her, or do you think maybe that I would have been served by having a lot more distrust for her? Which which thing do you think would have been more likely here? I, I think you have to balance, and, and I know it's difficult because we. No, I'm asking lost... you which which thing you think would have served me and my family best: my skepticism, 
Do you live or, in Michigan? Or blind trust. I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm in Michigan. Yeah, I, but I'm not speaking of blind trust. I would say the only figure here, and this is in very limited a lim limited degree is the Pope when he speaks infallibly. You you have a kind of Pedro. You got to put your your phone on airplane mode or something. Somebody's phone keeps. Going <laughs> That's on. not me. Oh, okay, I think it is me. Yeah, someone's blowing you up. Anyway, <clears throat> back to where I was at uh, with the line of inquiry. Okay, so I understand your your basic argument here. So we'll get back to this now that I've uh, I've seen your little whiteboard and things like this. Okay, <laughs> it's pretty big actually. So, so, Grace, so let's start. Hang on. So let's Grace. start with number one. The number one thing on the list. Sure. Trust your mother and father. You should definitely do that, right? I, I believe as an adult, you should trust your father. Yeah. Not what your if mother. your father's a conspiracy theorist? Yeah, we, I think you have to work work that out. I'm not well, saying that. Hang on. What does that wait? What does that mean? <laughs> work that out. You, you you want me to trust in the authority but, but as a of child, my, own, I think should, of my okay. father? He's a conspiracy theorist, yeah. and, and you, that's the highest on your list of trust. That's not the highest on my list of trust. Well, you said I ought trust father, right? But what if father? I believe a that's a good theorist? starting point. Yes. Yeah. So what if father's a conspiracy theorist? Should I ought not trust him then? I think I de it depends if, if 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 it strikes you that the conspiracy theories are like what is that that I read on my phone there. I think you would say, I'm having a problem trusting my father, and that's a real problem in a family. So so, so then, no, not really unconditional trust for father. Just just question question what father says as well, right? But but Andrew, you're being disingenuous. I've said that it's not an absolute blind trust. Trust doesn't mean if there's a breakdown of trust, we have to work through it right I, you're going to keep saying that i'm advocating for absolute blind trust of no, i'm everybody not saying in that hierarchy. i just asked you a question which is if well, i believe father, that's if father man, right if father is on your list well this, you gave me the list i'm going i'm operating off your list okay okay you yeah. start with your mother and your father it's nice to see you smile i'm, I'm glad said, we're a little bit you said start with father right yeah i do think most people should look into their family dynamics. This is mm -hmm. a Jesse Lee Peterson thing, right? You, you guys know who he is. That you should look into your family dynamics for the source of, the, you know, a lot of times confusion that you okay, mistrust. Okay, so, so dad, my dad's a conspiracy theorist, let's say. Yeah, and at sure. that point, I should start questioning him. I think you should work it out because if you lack trust in your father, I, I think you're going to lack trust in the world. No, no. But I mean, you have to have the starting point is I trust him. So why wouldn't you trust the conspiracy theories he's telling you are true? Right. Because then the problem becomes the higher sources of authority contradict that. Maybe. I'm not whoa, saying. Whoa, every... Wait, wait, wait. Hi. OK, now this is now we're getting somewhere. So yeah, you run into wait, a problem. the mayor. You think the mayor is a higher form of authority than your father is? Uh, I, I mean, uh, my chart is, you know, incomplete. So there's the Bible also. What right, about your on, governor? Is your go is your governor a higher form of authority than your father? On certain things, sure. Like if the governor came in and was like, hey, little girl, you should come with me. And, you know, who cares what your old man says? Right. I mean, the governor has the force of the state police. Right. So, I mean, he has. A and should people and people should trust that, Ben? I don't think you should. I know there was a situation with you that happened uh, a few days ago and the police showed up and that's happened actually to me. I think you should trust. No, I police. don't think it's happened the same way it happened to me, Ben, but no, I, that don't. Aside, I don't, but it was similar. I don't, I don't really care. What's killing me here is that you're, you, but didn't you trust anytime, those authorities? anytime we go through your list or go through your chart, right? But we start Andrew, to get into ums and hums and maybes but, but, and probably and, and all kinds of different shit. Andrew, didn't you trust the people who showed up at your house? Instead of saying, I don't trust them. Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely oh, no. not. Are you fucking crazy? No, you I didn't, didn't trust. Them? No, no. First thing well, I did was come out and say, the first like, thing I, I did do was lock. Do you think that I wanted to walk outside with my hands up while a bunch no. of people were surrounding me with guns? You think I trusted them then? Yeah, more than you did. Or do you think them? it was complete and total coercion and that I would just as soon have never done that again if uh, ever? Well, which, you know, there are people think in more likely. You know, there are people who get in situations which they in which they distrust the police and they try to defend themselves because they think the police are out to murder them. And I think this is a conspiracy theory on the left that police officers 
get in there, get, put their uniform on and seek to take certain groups and murder them. That is a conspiracy theory. And I think it's really unhealthy. Wait, you think it's a conspiracy theory that uh, yeah. police might uh, be have an inclination in some instances to kill people? I, I think the idea that that police officers get put their uniform on and seek to well, that's murder a, that's a, a generalization. Particular... I'm asking about something more specific. Do you agree with me are, that do you agree with perfect. me that there must at least be some police officers that do put on their uniform in the morning and would love nothing more than to kill somebody? I don't think there are any such police officers. Not a one. I, I don't think so. These are mostly men. Sorry, offend anyone. But these are mostly men who care about these communities. I I, I really do believe that. So do I've been held at to, gunpoint. Hang on, do, do cops? I've ever, been held at gunpoint. Wait, wait. Do funny cops? Story. So so you don't think that cops go to jail for corruption? They don't go to jail for murder. They don't go to jail for any of these various. Well, what are they getting thrown in prison for? If the intention is just to protect and serve at all yeah, times? Yeah, I know everybody can become corrupt. I understand that. I okay, understand so then there must be at least corrupt. be a few cops whose intention is to do you harm, right? To do me harm? To do somebody harm somewhere. Well, I understand that if there's a corrupt police organization and, you know, you get in their way, it becomes like the mafia. I understand that. But I think by well, large, I don't know. You just you're getting done telling me that we should have nothing but high trust and lick their fucking boots, Ben. <laughs> but you you're Mr. Fallacy, right? You think that that is a correct uh, characterization of what I said, Andrew? No, That's I'm not. paraphrasing. No, you're not paraphrasing. Yeah, that was you're straw manning, right, Mr. Straw man? Debate guy. Right? There's no straw man. You're, I'm just paraphrasing. I, you're paraphrasing, saying we should lick their boots. That's literally what a paraphrase. That's what I said. We should lick their boots, that's, basically. That's paraphrasing. Because I think you yeah. should trust law enforcement in a dangerous situation over yourself. Taking Why? Hand of the situation. Why do you think that? Why do I think you should generally trust law authority? Yeah. Law. Because I think they've handled these situations. They've been in this situation, and I think that. You don't think that they exacerbate certain situations big time? Like, I don't I think know. they're often Let's put in difficult situations. Do you think that the, that the Branch Davidian should have trusted the ATF, Ben? I think, okay, that's perfect. I think the ATF was put in a very difficult position there. You cannot have, you know, an armed uh, group. I'm not saying what they did was right, but I don't think it's super clear that you can you can have a uh, an that you can get a camera that you can get a camera and have an entire convoy of cattle cars coming in for a massive photo op for a bus, fuck it up so badly that you end up burning to death hundreds of women and children. It's a terrible tragedy. I don't think uh, the it's, agents... not, it's more than a fucking tragedy, Ben. It was complete and total incompetence. And a bunch of apologists for it, like government bootlickers such as yourself, have been running around <laughs> telling us that it's you know it's tragic. But it's the exception to the rule. No, it was stone cold fucking murder. They pumped the whole place full of gas, lit it on fire, and butchered women and children. And they did oh, okay. it all live. They did it live where we could see okay. it. Okay. And but nobody. Then, nobody so then you are advocating. Ben, ben, ben. nobody yeah, was held go. responsible, Ben. Nobody was held responsible. And you're like, pretty please, won't you have a little bit more high trust? Well, don't trust the conspiracy by the way, the only reason we even have any information about what actually happened there was because of the conspiracy theorist, Ben. Okay, what's the conspiracy? The conspiracy was that the ATF was fired upon first, was simply defending themselves. They were trying to pump the place. Wait a minute. Of... This is this is the conspiracy theory or this is the <clears throat> This narrative? is the ATF's narrative. Okay, so that's not the conspiracy theory. No, the, no yeah. well, I have to tell you the narrative before sure, I can sure. tell you how I'm conspiracy not familiar, theorists yeah. cracked it. Sure. OK, their narrative was that they had no choice. They filled it with some gas. One of them accidentally threw in an incendiary grenade. It was such a tragedy. But we can see from air cam footage now that there was agents who were propped sitting behind the actual compound and they were murdering women and children as they were running out on fire. And, and the sniper, the, hang on, the sniper who was true. present at Waco later was sent to Ruby Ridge where he put a bullet through a little baby and her mom in the same shot, same guy. Now, yeah. who the fuck do you think figured all this out? You think that law enforcement came out and was like, well, let me give you the truth, guys. Or do you think that there was a ton of pressure from people who questioned the official narrative because they didn't trust the fucking government? 
Well, I, I, I think that, I mean, I don't know the details of this situation, Andrew. I well, don't no know. shit. If you did, you might not be so inclined to just bootlick for law enforcement, then. But, but what is the rest of the theory that, that the ATF seeks to murder people? What, what, what well, is their wait, nobody to do nobody that? said that they seek there was to a government people. but what i am saying is well, what that was their motivation hang on government agencies should not be trusted as high forms of authority to make autonomous decisions with no citizen oversight and the only reason we have that citizen oversight is cuz we can't fucking trust them but you all, you you <laughs> don't have oversight of every situation sometimes a police officer is in a situation or an atf whatever is in a situation that gets out of control and they have to have the authority to to uh try their best no and they may they have just, failed. they're just citizens in costumes ben they're citizens in costumes who are they training. have authority they have proper authority yeah but you it, that you shouldn't trust their authority just because you, it's, it's you're, that's what you're them. saying yeah right. that's I, what I don't I'm think saying. you can completely you shouldn't trust officers them. authority just because it's given to them okay it should so, be demonstrated so then you disagree with the apostle paul who says we should pay respect to the temporal rulers right how is and that? And he's including not, wait, wait, Caligula. He's that's including not, the Emperor Caligula. First of all, that's not disrespect to anybody. Because it's he common, says they were placed there by sense, God. By God. It's common sense. First of all, there's a difference between people who are put in authority over the swath and masses versus a police officer who's literally a constable. His job is to keep the peace. Yeah. Okay. During the 80s, all throughout the 1980s, it was a wild west in New York City where you had the situations that called for whistleblowers like Serpico because police officers were worse than the thugs that they were wrangling. I know that they happened. were running in and they were stealing and robbing people blind, murdering them happened. in the streets and generally doing horrific things. OK, but here. Perfect. This now, wait on. What changed? No, all no, that? no, 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 well, no, 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 no. You've ruined me the whole debate. What Give me a changed second. all that? Then? No, wait a second. Wouldn't you admit that the if the alternative is. No police. That is a problem. That's not the no, I said if. If you say, well, let's get rid of the police, which some people Depends have on what said. It was with. Wouldn't you admit Depends on that what even it was a corrupt police no. is Depends a better thing than no. no police? No, it depends on Wouldn't, what it's replaced with. You would not with. admit that? It depends on what it's uh, replaced with. This is what you would say? Police. That's... Wait. Police is a newer term. Newer term. We didn't operate off of the same criminal justice statutes that we do right now. For most of American history, we most certainly didn't operate with a standing police force that was paramilitary almost yeah. ever in yeah, human just, history anywhere. Tactic, so, right? so yeah, yes, could you replace police officers with local constables and probably right. come up with better results? It's possible. Sure. Yeah, yeah, right. So I, I don't. So yeah, no, I'm not. You could probably replace. Various police departments to great effect. Then that's one, but two. Okay, but you need to have someone two, with a gun, right, Andrew? You've you got to no, have someone no, with England a gun has no, who's they don't entrusted have guns. with this gun no. by the proper authority no. to keep the peace no. when things get violent. England of course, has, you think that. No, England has no guns. They have constables with sticks. They have guns. They have a station where they could possibly go get them if they need them, and they almost never use them. So you would send police officers to the United States of America in a in a in a like a, an urban environment out there with a with a justice stick and say good luck guy. You're That's making not work. you're it's making huge leaps. It's a different culture. You're making. I huge think we should have leaps. a less. I think we should have a less gun intense culture. But I understand we have a problem with the Second Amendment. Whoa! Wait! Wait! What? Yeah. Right. So you want uh, let me let me guess. You want mass gun control now, right? Then I think those are very very tricky things to do. Mm -hmm. But do I think that Randy Weaver no, should no have laid down? Wait, 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 wait. Do I think Randy Weaver should have laid down his arms? Yes, I do. Okay. I do think he should have. Yeah, I got. I you. think he should have said he should, he should have. I am out. not the ruler of yeah, this. Yeah, he should place. have walked out. He should have gone on his knees. He should have licked their fucking boots. Even though he ended up winning because they were completely in the wrong, he ended up getting millions of dollars. Okay, in settlement fine. If you money. call that winning, if you call that well, winning, well, no, then no, fine, hang won. on. It was a win for everybody in the United States. A win for everybody. That one man, one man changed the course of everything because he said no. He wasn't going to get on his knees like Mr. Thorpe and lick the fucking boots <laughs> of the authority that be. I love to lick the boots, Andrew. You're right. Well, you I mean, me. well, what are we talking about? <laughs> now we're getting into we need to do more disarmament of the public. 
Before that, it's put all your faith in the police or at least Andrew, put an exorbitant amount of faith in the police. And then Andrew, before that, it's trust everyone in the government. These are absurdities. And, and when I bring up things, you know this is strong, hang on. Man. And when I bring up the things like Waco and Ruby Ridge and what happened in those instances, you're just like, well, I'm not really that familiar with them. It's like, well, no wonder you have all this faith and trust. Hey, I, I, I have had a lot of rough experiences with all levels of government and church authority. But um, I, I, I can say, like, let me give you let me hand you the rhetorical win. I actually believe that at this point in our society, we have a problem at the level of the rulers of our nation. I think we have two groups of people who think there are two different rightful uh, rulers of our country. And I don't think we can resolve this problem. And I do think here, here's where it gets crazy. I do think Man, I have to go up and grab myself some coffee because my wife's <laughs> taking care of her sick grandma. We having a so great I time? have to actually get my own fucking coffee. So there's still time <laughs> left in the debate. Gather I'm having your, a great time. On, gather your great. incoherent thoughts. I'll be back to listen to them shortly. <laughs> All right. Can I pro can I promote? promote my um, channel for a little bit yeah you can do that or maybe take a bathroom break yourself and then i'll hold down the fort i'm good but uh you're good got the iron so bladder just... good job <laughs> yeah i cleaned everything out yeah I so like... if i could yeah. take a second actually to talk to you sure 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 Pedro. uh stay calm you're in the middle of a debate the heat is on i would say don't take any of this personally right um oh, no. If I had to tell you what's really happening right now is, well, my grandpa said it best. Some people need to learn the hard way. Have you ever heard that saying? I do. Yeah, I believe that's true. I'm one of those people. Me too. I'm one of those people too. So hard right hit. now, I think we're learning the hard way, but don't I worry. Don't really know. But, I don't really know here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. vetted, right? I get it. Exactly. I'm getting, so, I'm getting so the none of this is personal. None of this is <laughs> cool. Nothing. None of this is personal. Believe me, I've encountered yeah. hostility. I, I've been married twenty years. It's familiar. There you go. All right. Um, so you want to? I used to uh, teach high resume. school. Sixteen-year-old yeah, you, you want to see some hostility? Right. You can so, resume with your thoughts, sir. Go for it. Mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. So, Andrew, if we can redirect, and I think we could both say we're having a good time. Is that right? You came in a little hot. You can see that I, I, I have a point. And, and there's really, you know, there's you don't no have a need. point. I don't have a point. No. But you must admit that there are times, like, you don't tell your children to, like, there are people, right, who encounter a police officer and immediately go into hostility mode. And if they've got a gun, they feel like this is how we're going to do this. Right. You don't, you would not advise your children of course to people, do that. Yeah. There's people who've done that. Sure. Right. And a lot of times this, this mode that they go into relies on a kind of way of thinking that they've been taught about, you know, that, that, that police officers wake up in the morning, put on their uniform and want to kill certain people just for the color of their skin. Right. Isn't that where that comes from? For some people, maybe. So I'm saying that theory is not a good theory. And people who have this theory need to work that out with the police. And I'm not saying that the police are perfect, but you can't have a society in which large numbers of people have this view of the police that, you know, we we fire at them first. And I mean, you do have to have a large number of people don't have that belief. I think a lot of people. Uh, well, how many how many do you think is a lot? Do you think that do you think even one percent of the 300 million people that live in the United States have that view? Yeah, I think a lot of people have that view. I you think, think you very, think yeah, that one finish my point. I think there. I think there are a very few, a small number of people who would put that into action by drawing. A OK, gun so a so so not very many then. But I like Andrew, you're saying I'm a boot licking fanatical authoritarian, right? OK, fine. But I'm saying if a police officer commands a situation, I do think that people in the vicinity should not create a problem. And you work it out in court or you work it out later. And I do think, generally speaking, you should trust someone in that situation. I'll give you an example. I was trying to put in a car seat when my kids were little. And those, if I can swear, those fucking car seats are really hard to put in. And I was getting very frustrated. And my wife 
who's a wonderful person, was getting frustrated with me because I was trying to get it super tight because I care about my kids. Um, and I got exasperated and I threw I, 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 I exited the car and just threw the keys on the ground. I said, fuck this. Right. And a police officer just happened to be there right at that second. And he told me, whoa, what's going on, buddy? And he commanded the situation. OK, so I didn't he had I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I understand that he was saying like something funny is going on here. And I immediately say, like, officer, it's just a misunderstanding. He took my wife aside because he suspected that I was being, you know, crazy, which it seemed like I was being. And it was all diffused. I don't see what that's what we should do. Right. I mean, there's proper authority. It's understandable. <laughs> and I don't know that I should give him a bunch of shit and tell him that I got rights and blah, blah, blah. I was on a public street. You know, so let me ask you a question. <laughs> Sure. Let's say you're in that situation. The cop comes over because, you know, mm -hmm. he doesn't know what's going on and whatnot. Right. And he grabs your wife and just out of pure surprise, she's just purely surprised. She lashes sure. out and she shoves him. Now she's assaulted a police officer. He takes her to the ground. A police puts, officer just grabs my wife. I mean, what? Yeah. Yeah. He, he says, hey, ma'am. And he just grabs her shoulder. Right. Trying to get her attention. And she, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. She yeah. Just kind of, yeah. She assaults okay. him. OK. So now he, yeah. he's on her. And he's got a partner and she's screaming. She doesn't even hardly know what's going on. Right. Would you just stand there and wait and sort it out in court? Absolutely. Absolutely. While, while yeah. they're kicking, what if they're kicking the shit out of her? What am I going to do? I guess you would just stand there and take it, Ben. That's what right. you would do. I would. Yeah. No, you wouldn't, Ben. Oh. No, well, no. I, I would. I, I would no, Ben. I believe violently. you, Ben. Unlike Pedro, I would intervene violently un, with, unlike with Pedro, men with guns. No, I, I would absolutely not. believe. But this is that a you would just stand there while they beat the holy shit out of your wife right in front of you, and I'm sure that you would console <laughs> her with, "Don't worry, honey, because we're going to go to court." There are situations in which you don't have control. I, I think this is a fantasy. I don't think that would happen. Why would a why What do you mean you don't think it would happen? My wife weighs like got, 120 wait, you pounds. You just got She's done telling me to... that there's all kinds of people who are going to react violently towards police officers who have low trust. They might okay. even do it. They might even do it just by accident. They don't even Whoa. mean to be being violent. And now okay, a woman's Andrew. on the ground getting the shit kicked out of her. Okay, well, her all right, you're the tough right guy, there. right? You're the tough guy. What would you do? What would you do? Tough guy. Well, they're they're doing something that's unlawful, and I would react in the in the proper way for somebody, anybody who. Is and what is that way, Andrew? What it depends on the line? situation. I'll leave it to your imagination. But if my fantasy, if people, if people were mm -hmm. assaulting my wife or my children, regardless of the costume that they wore, I wouldn't just stand there, Ben. Well, I mean, you're you're talking about a scenario where uh, cops are beating the living shit out of a 120 pound woman. Yeah, it's happened for no ben. reason. Want to see videos? It's happened I many mean... times, Ben. Okay. They've uh, they've they've grabbed little little women because they don't have the right face covering on, haven't they, Ben? Taking them right to the ground, drug them right out of private businesses, haven't they? While their husbands, while their husbands, guys like you, just stood there and took Cucks, it. right? They Cucks just stood there and they took it, uh -huh. Ben. You know, Andrew, you should be a little more respectful. I don't. I, I'm just. We're talking, right? I understand. I'm well, a cop, I do right? think that coming because I'm not a tough this, guy like you, right? I do think coming into this conversation. You're right. Maybe I should have been a little bit more respectful. But at this point, after that, there's no so how about a little respect Earth now? I should have a, a, how a about a little inch respect of respect now? for you at all. Not not any respect for you after you, hearing that. No, right. you don't respect me. I get now, it. Ben, you probably let, have issues. Let me ask you another father, question. If and you don't I'm mind. playing the role of your father. Yeah, if you don't mind. You. Are you are you married, Ben? Yeah. yeah are you? Uh, and are you do you live with your wife? I've had some difficulties with my wife. Oh, you have, yeah. Uh, you're not. Are you? Are you separated? This is a respectful. This is a respectful line of questioning. Well, I I think so. Yeah, I think that you know maybe there's. I believe that maybe there's reasons. Is... Maybe there's reasons that these problems exist. Maybe she doesn't think you're a very good protector because if she was getting assaulted, you just stand there and wait for the court to sort it out. I've been in dangerous situations with my family. Maybe you're just that type of guy, Ben. <laughs> you know. Like women can sure, smell buddy. that, bro. Go ahead, Andrew. Yep. <laughs> You're winning points by being this way. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Be disrespectful. This, these, these are the things you have said. I, if your audience thinks this is a nice way to approach someone, 
then you win, buddy. Listen, man. There why don't was, you just you once? Know, why don't once, you just once say, you said you know, the last you've got thing a smaller said, penis there's no, than me. There's no. There's you've no got reason a smaller to penis anymore, than me. Man. That's what this argument is. What's that? I didn't hear that. We're doing this thing. I'm the tough guy, and you're not a tough guy, right? Because I'm no, reasonable. We're just having we're having a debate. Well, you never gave me your scenario of what you're going to do. You said, "Well, think about it, buddy." I would I would in some way intervene other than allowing the courts to uh, wait for the courts to decide if my wife was being brutally assaulted by anybody, regardless of what their official rank in anything was. OK, well, and I think uh, I think that most most husbands would find themselves face down on the ground next to their wives if they loved them. That's just my personal opinion on this. So if, if a mugger came up to you or whatever we call them these days, someone came up to you with a gun and said, uh, do as I say, or you're going to be, you know, in trouble. You wouldn't do as they say. I might. I might too. I might not. But I mean, you're, you're not in control of the situation unless you, you know, you have a weapon. But if and the, you have if, to make a prudential what the, judgment. What if Andrew? the mugger, what if the mugger came up to you and your wife and you weren't, you know, you're not in control. Now you don't even have the courts to appeal to. And he would said, well, you, you just watch while I pin her down and rape her. Would you just stand there then? No. Then you would do something? Yes. Because why? What's the difference in scenario? The costume that he's wearing? Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Now we're adding to your fantasy, which I think is a little bit of a fantasy, that the police officers are taking my wife not only beating the crap out of her, but also raping her. That's what we're going. I this didn't is ask like you any. No, I'm saying well, you said, what's the difference in the scenario? Just the even if he well, was just beating the shit. OK, even if he's just beating the shit out of her, would you intervene then? Obviously, at a certain point, uh, at a certain point. But I just can't even imagine this scenario. I don't know what you you're can't imagine a about. scenario where a mugger. Uh, no, no. You? I mean, a police officer. You, yeah, no, but I'm asking, I'm asking specifically, what's the difference between a mugger who's beating the shit out of your wife in front of you and police officers doing it? Well, there's a big difference. They're the what's legitimate the authority. They're the legitimate authority. And this is why we don't trust what you call legitimate authority. You don't trust not, any authority? Because we're not going to let men with costumes beat the shit out of our wives, Ben, just because they're wearing a different costume than the mugger. They're so still what are you the going to do? Wife. You're going to take out a gun and have a gun battle with a police ben, officer. You keep putting your... words in my mouth. I'm well, just I'm saying, saying you, you I'm just saying that there's no, I don't think most men, authority. I don't think that most men would just take it. Ben. that's all I'm saying. So you, you're saying there's no difference between a police officer and a criminal on the streets that you would not give that police officer any more respect. Is that what you're saying? No. Didn't say that at all. Well, I mean, you said, what's the difference? And I said, yeah, no, what the I said, what's is, the difference you... in this? I said, what's the difference in the situation if the mugger's beating the shit out of her versus the police officer? At that point, they're both criminals, Ben. I understand that. They're both right. engaging in unlawful criminal activity. Don't you have a right at that point and a duty to actually do something instead yeah, of but just you, stand but, there? But your assumption is going to be that you trust a person in authority initially. No, that's that... your assumption. Okay, Not my assumption. One... Oh, really? You don't trust an authority if a police officer comes up to you and says, you're going to need to move it on. You you what do you do? Escalate the situation? To Maybe a lethal... it depends on what the situation is. Well, then you've never really been in situations, Andrew, because you should de-escalate the situation. Even with the criminal, you should de-escalate the situation. Don't depends try to the be situation. a tough guy. Don't try to be a tough guy. It depends on work. the situation. I understand at a certain point. But the first thing you do with someone who's violent is you say, look, I got no problem with you. We just want to move on, right? Wouldn't you agree with that? I know. Let that me ask you a question. Uh, sure. Do you believe in evolution? I do not believe in evolution. Okay, and I would love so to go you on believe, your show and talk about why. But I do don't you believe in the fight or flight response? But but let me just say, I believe in microevolution. Do you believe in the fight or it. flight response? Yeah, I do believe we have that. Okay, yeah. so what's the fight response? When does that kick in for you? <laughs> you want to? You want to? Yeah, there are times when you fight. I'm fighting you, right? It's kicking no. in, right, Andrew? No, you're just having a verbal debate with me. There's no fight here. There's a little bit of a fight because you're being aggressive and disrespectful, and I'm putting you in your place rhetorically. Well, man, you're doing a great job. Yeah, but that I aside, I'm asking job. you. I'm asking. I am you, doing a great job. Are you job. saying that using an overt amount of force and aggression doesn't defuse situations? It can. Okay, then. So when I but say it it's can just, escalate, so when I say it's so when I say it's situational, you agree with me. Thank you. I agree. Right. But you're, I, I, I'm saying you should you should initially respect authority. And of course, Andrew, you do. You do. 
when a police officer stops you, you do not hit the gas with your family in the car. Well, wait. You pull over and you well, very carefully well, wait, I'm be aren't I reach being coerced? for your registration. Wait, I'm being This coerced. idea of being a tough guy, this is the problem. Wait, wait, you have though, a kind coerced. of gun first about? mentality, but that's not a good situation. I've been in well, situations, you've been in situations, everyone here has been in situations where someone's driving dangerously, ben, right? Ben, wait, wait, wait. And your instinct is to hit them back. And you've got to put the brakes on, right? We're no, not tough not, guys. Well, that's as, not as, my instinct. As but fathers, again, it is your instinct. This has nothing to do. You keep saying tough guy. It's bizarre. I'm not. I'm talking you about came how on I. You here like a tough I guy. I literally am talking about how I believe most people respond in these situations. Most will respond in these situations. Now, well, what's if we want to, if we want to be logical about this, which we should be. Yeah. If the bright flashing lights weren't behind me, signaling for me to pull over, there's a yeah. consequence if I don't, right? Yeah. So Could I'm actually be. being so I'm being coerced, right? Yes, you are being Okay, coerced. so I'm so what's going on is that there's a threat that something will happen. So what I'm doing is obeying authority, not respecting right. it. Well, I mean, okay, well, if you want to make that distinction. Well, that's I mean, fine. it's a distinction with merit. You can obey because you're being coerced and have zero respect, right, Ben? You don't respect a police officer for the job he does? Not simply just because he's a police officer. He hasn't earned my respect yet. Oh, every police officer has to personally earn your respect? If he wants me to respect him. Really? Oh, yeah, that's every a very human being on view. planet, Every human being on planet Earth has to earn my respect if they want to be respected and vice versa. That's right. That's it. That's exactly the problem. Every human being on earth has to personally earn your respect. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, Andrew. That is not true. It's not possible to have a society in which people say that and live by it. That's not true. Okay, you give me an example of why legitimate why, why authorities. You, well, and you say you're a Christian. So tell and, me again why that's not true. Because Paul, well, okay, as a Christian, don't you recognize that the Apostle Paul said you should respect authority? So when we're talking about Not whether he didn't say, so, hey, unless you're Andrew, and then you need he needs ben, to earn calm, the respect. Calm down. And, Listen, when we're talking about you, when we're talking Why about so hostile. Can when we just we're talking relax? about respect in the commons. I'm winning this debate and you know it. When I've you're got talking, better lighting. Yeah, when you're talking about respect in the commons, that's different than talking about personal respect. You understand the difference there? Well, you said you don't respect a police officer per se, unless he earns your respect. Right. Don't respect him just because he has a uniform. On. You don't respect the badge? No, not just because it exists. Okay. Do you respect a, a successor of Peter in, in the Orthodox Church? Do you have respect for the priest as the bishops, uh, whatever, you know? Uh, Do I have respect for that office? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay, so why don't you have respect for the secular authorities? Because they're secular. Okay, <laughs> but 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 you understand that part of Christianity is that we respect the secular authorities, and the Orthodox Church has no uh, no no too that much we obey for that we authority. obey. The, well, you respect the, the no 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 Andrew for. no 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 that's not the teaching. You should ask your priest. So about let me ask this. you. Let me not ask yourself. you a question. Let me ask you a question. You just respect everybody. I'm winning. That, you just respect everybody or no? I love my chat. Everyone's supporting me. Thank you. Yeah, all three of them. So <laughs> I know me. because you do you didn't promote this debate. You didn't promote it. You wouldn't let me how when I was gonna you you gave me the link three minutes before I came on. So? You didn't promote it. Yeah. What do you mean? And I you didn't tried to kill it? it, but you did come on. I give you credit for that. What do you mean I tried to kill it? You didn't promote it. You didn't. You wouldn't let me come on and do a welcome to the crucible thing so people could get to know me. You didn't go on Jimby Bob stream and say there's going to be a great debate tonight. I, you, you've tried Did to drive traffic well, away from now, your ben, own business. Ben, help me out here. Did <laughs> I send you a message saying that I'm an extremely busy person? You did. I, I have been annoying, I will admit. Yeah. OK, so and and did I tell you that I was making an exception tonight just for you? taking time out of my day just to do this thing. I, I, and I think you've been glad you did, right? We were having a good conversation, right? Oh, it's I interesting. Mean, so far it's been pretty annoying for me, but yeah, yeah. But I mean, in terms of the channel, I mean, I appeal to Pedro. It's, it's fun. It's, it's a, it's an interesting debate. It's hot. You like, right. You come on strong. I push you back. It's fun. Not hot, like sexy. I'm just saying. It always well, definitely is watching well, Andrew debate. It's fun. It's very fun for us. No, I've just, uh, I've just, been I, watching. I'm doing a good job, aren't I? 
No, you're just making a fool out of yourself. While, and I'm enjoying playing Come with on, my Come on, give food. me the ch chat. Give me some love. <laughs> yeah, give me some love. I'm doing yeah. a great job. In fact, you have been entertaining as well, this, Ben. Everybody Thank here you. in this yes. chat, make sure you go I over. I love this guy. Make this sure guy. you go over to Ben's chat. And tell him just how great he's doing. Make sure I that need you do that. I need so I right, I need to boost myself <laughs> because you put me down and you said that my wife, you know, you get into stuff, Andrew. I, I wouldn't get into your wife. I mean, I don't I wouldn't get into stuff about your wife. Nor well, would I get wait, into your wait, wife. I'm not wait, wait, wait a second. If you make the information public, right? Meaning you tell people that this is your situation, they're going to draw their own conclusions based on your actions, right? Yeah, sure. You're talking about the Thorpocalypse over at Jim Bob's channel? Yeah, so here's I the thing. I tried to be Hang very... Hang on, stop. Just let me get a fucking word in edgewise. I've been... The second things. half of the debate, I've been trying to let you just yap and yap and yap and yap and yap. But let me get a word I know. in I here. need... I respect your authority. See, I respect let me get a Let me get a word in here, okay? You guys are in charge. You said... When you said these Hands words up. to me, that if your wife was having the shit kicked out of her, you would just let that happen... And try to sort it out later in the courts, right? That to I would, me, I would initially so, trust. So you had all the chance in the world to earn my respect, and that that statement, it killed all of that chance. It's all gone. Yeah, now. you know, but all you would do the same thing. You would concede the situation to police officers, assuming they're going to be reasonable. Then at some <laughs> point, right, you might say, like, "What the hell is going on here?" You would do the same thing, tough guy. You would. I would, huh? Of course you would. How do you know I haven't already If you're reacted, pulled over how do you know with I your children in the car and your wife way. in the car, you're not going for the gun. You're not doing that because you're not an you're idiot. You're making – so you keep – you won't stick with the actual hypothetical. You keep making like these kind of non-analogous – Your you're, you're hypothetical like, is so crazy. We, Police officers so don't about, do that. So we're talking – yes, they do do that. I, I'll do give you an example. I'll give you an example in Michigan of a woman just not wearing the proper face gear and getting the shit kicked out of her by police officers. Yeah, well, that's, what do you, I mean, usually there's and, more to and it do than you that. Think, do you think that it was okay that bystanders just kind of cruised by and watched it happen? Don't you think that that's the same exact mentality that leads to bystanders allowing women to get thrown in the trunks of cars while they just stand there and stare at it? Generally speaking, okay, I'll go, I'll go there, right? Generally speaking, if a police officer is handling a situation, I would not intervene unless the police <clears throat> officer seemed like he was shot or something like that and needed to you know generally i would leave that to the police officers i wouldn't go and create a terrible situation for that police officer i would not nor would you andrew do you, so do you do you have like no duty to stop people who are doing bad things just because they're how do i costume? how can i judge the situation see i'm because you have you. judgment but if i see a police officer hitting someone male or female your wife I... <laughs> okay there I have judgment, but I'm saying if I, you said bye. And what did you say you would do with your judgment? You would fucking just stand there and so, take it. So if you see a police officer handling a situation with violence, you would stop and you would take control of the situation. You wouldn't do no such thing. And that doesn't mean you're not a, a masculine man. It just means that you. I'm not talking would, of Ben. I'm not talking well, about you every said situation. Bystanders. You said literally bystanders. talking about a singular situation. You keep moving around to everything that I'm not talking no, about. No, you brought up bystanders and I'm talking about bystanders. No, 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 no. The no, problem stop, here is stop, that you. Stop. Okay. When I brought up bystanders. Con respecto. When, I, when I brought up bystanders, I was talking about bystanders witnessing a kidnapping and doing nothing. No, you, you were talking about police brutality, no. which I think does no. exist. Do you want to roll back the tape? Because I'll show you. If that's what you want to do. But what I was giving an example of was a case that happened where a woman was kidnapped in broad daylight, stuffed into a trunk while innocent by or why bystanders just watched. Oh, they I thought do, you were talking about police. Who did they didn't. Well, I know because you're you're not understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth. You're you go all over the place. You won't just focus on what's being said. I'd yeah, like I mean, you. I'd like you to engage realistically with this hypothetical without uh, moving okay. the goalpost. Don't uh, let's not okay, move yeah, the goalpost. Okay, yeah. If I right, okay. This happened outside of my house when I used to live in Providence. Um, there are um, situations. There were there was a bar that that was near my house, and there was a brawl, and it got out of control. Someone intervened and got stabbed to death, and. I, I think that's a, a great thing to do, but a lot of times, you know, it's imprudent 
you don't know what's going on. And, you know, it's a, I, I, I don't know, is the person a martyr? Because that's what Jesus calls you to do. Stand there be, and do the uh, thing that's the most prudent when horrific things are going on around you. We are right? always called to do the most prudent thing. That's correct. OK, Prudence so and that and should guide us. So, but so you, you don't understand. So wait, the term so you prudent. should be prudent while somebody's being stabbed to death in front of you because you're worried you might get the knife, too. Do you know what the word prudence means? Andrew? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you sure. a story. Yeah, great, great. Yeah, There's great a guy story. I know yeah. who I think literally is a horrible guy. His name is Big Tech. Real fucking scumbag. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't even believe that guy for a second would be walking by while somebody was getting knifed and just be like, well, it's not prudent for me to get involved because I'm afraid I'll get the knife. I don't think that he would allow a woman to get stuffed into a trunk of a car. I don't think that he would allow his okay. wife to just get beaten by police officers while he stood there. I okay. hate this fucking guy. And okay. I don't believe that he would do that, Ben. Okay. I mean, if you're, if you let, let's, let's do a, a real scenario. If you're living on a border town in Mexico where there are cartels that basically run the town and they do things right. And the federal, the federales don't know what to do. Right. You're going to, would you intervene in that situation? And they, they do wrong things. I'm saying, are you going to, I, I really think the local populace can't again, do anything. Again, right? it depends. It depends on the situation. Yes. Which we why exercise I'm being, prudence. Which is Andrew. why I'm being specific with situations. Okay. And you can I'm see saying, yeah, the, more, the more specific we get, the more the contrast and divide within our worldviews becomes because a lot of your, times when from well, your worldview, well, from your worldview, you're really doing kind of, kind of the most weak need thing you can do, Ca which is I'll get you later after you've already broken her face or stabbed that guy or this or that, you know, the, this is, right. the, if you want to know why society's actually fucked up in low trust, it's Guys because like yeah, they can't trust men like you <laughs> to intervene when horrific okay. things are happening. Is Christ your Lord? Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Yes. Did he say, do not return? Uh, did he say, turn the other cheek? Did he say, those who live by the sword die by the sword? Okay. So you're not. And those living... who are commands, Wait, not suggestions. Stop, to you. You're not living by the sword by intervening. If somebody's being horribly abused or assaulted, that's not living by the sword. Many, many uh, look, I, can you okay, can see that that's I'm, not living by the sword, man? I, I'm not saying I'm a tough guy. Right. And, and the apostles also had a sword with them. Okay. I but mean, can you concede that that's percent. not living by the sword? I think that you are a person who likes to think he's a tougher guy than he is. I don't even know what and, the fuck you're talking about. I'm asking <laughs> you a specific question. I've been in dangerous situations. A lot of times when a violent situation is going it on, it can't be dangerous it's for you. You just and it's fucking gang stand on there. gang. You just it's gang stand on there. gang. And, how, and, can you, and, how can you have ever been in a dangerous situation if ever anything dangerous is going on? Ben Thorpe is in the corner, just standing there, going, "Oh shit, what do I do?" I've been Trust intervened the guy in situations. Authority. Holy shit! I've intervened in situations that were dangerous. You have. have you? Tell yeah. me that kind of story. I I went to court uh, against the, the 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 head mafia family in Providence, and no one would go to court with me in the neighborhood because they were all tremendously afraid of this family. I stood in court, and right, I mean, I it was a zoning issue; it was no big deal, and I don't think they were going to kill my family. But there was a part of me that said, well. So you I didn't mean, really think that it was particularly dangerous. <laughs> he says, I didn't really think it was very dangerous, but I intervened, you know, like what? Okay. Come on, dude. Come yeah, on. I mean, man. I, 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 if I thought it was really, really dangerous, I wouldn't have, you I know, would not go to court against the uh, Sinaloa cartel. If I was a Mexican, I wouldn't go to court only, with them. Only Nor this. would you. You're right. You're right. Forget the conspiracy theorists. Forget that crowd. Forget the men who will intervene. Let's just trust authority. We'll hope to God that uh, yeah. the authority will get there in time to save our lives, Ben, because yes. you, you sure as fuck aren't going to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm not going that's to, right. and you're not going to. <laughs> we need to build trust of the proper authorities mm -hmm. uh, and respect them, even, even though we're, they're not perfect, um, rather than descend into anarchy. That's correct. Would you, would you if a child was drowning, would you jump in? like to save the child who was drowning that's a great that's a great example not always because a lot of times when you save someone who's drowned not a child but like an adult a lot of times when you jump in you're going to drown too child it, child ben they'll focus on what i'm asking not on what you decide to make the question would you jump in if a child was drowning to save the child 
I think I would, but it would depend on the circumstances. The current's really strong. You think your success is probably just intuitively like going to only be 5%. I would, I would then I would choose my children. Yeah, I would. I would say I, I can't, they can't afford to be fatherless. Yeah, I would do that. And you would too. And then you get to walk over to the mom who's screaming and crying and hysterical. And you're like, look, I was going to do it, but fuck your kids, my kids. See, it's and I'm a great Christian. Christian. My name is Ben. I'm a Christian. Here's a church I go to. Make sure you look me up. I'm a great so, guy. Really, I am. If you had a 5% chance of survival, yes, you would jump in. Yes. And 95% chance yes, that your yes, wife would yes. have no husband. Yes, yes, yes. child, I would. Yes. Yeah. And even my greatest enemy would. Even my enemies would do that, Ben. Even the people I hate would do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, am, I may, we don't know what we would do in that circumstance, but I think if I. Yes, we do know what we would it. do in that circumstance. I know what I would do in that circumstance. Yeah. For sure. It's real easy to be a tough guy on the internet. It's not right? being a tough guy. Yeah, it is. No, it's just, it's actually the opposite. It's having empathy and emotion. It's understanding well, that emotion. when a child is screaming and drowning, that you should, the intuition should not be calculated at that hey, point. Can I give you an example? I'll give you an example. It, just the other day, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, this happened. This, I was at the beach with my kids. We live in a small town in Rhode Island that um, has a little beach. So as we're leaving, I'm leaving with my kids. And I, we had noticed there was this couple there. The guy was huge and buff and kind of oiled up with one of those little kind of Speedos on. And this woman was with him who was kind of out of it. And she Are drifted over. Are we talking about her. buff, oiled up men now, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does that bother? Does that excite you? It sounds like it excited you. That's all, bro. <laughs> it seems like you're the one who was excited. And just don't. We've had men take their shirt off on this program. Before. I know. I don't want that you was to be me. one of I did those. That. I did okay. that. Go to just my don't. channel don't and see how one. I did that. Anyway, I drove ahead. that kid to do that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Man. So as we're leaving, but you could tell that this woman and this man had some kind of relationship, right? As we were leaving, the they they were having words, and this guy checked her so she fell down, right? And he, everyone he was what? He checked, you know, physically hit her so that she fell backwards and started screaming. Okay. But then she got up, and but I could see that, you know. This was not a situation to intervene with, but I did go over well, there. Well, Ben, almost no situation is a situation oh, for Ben oh, to hold, intervene hold, with. Hold, John, 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 well, yeah, yes, I will give you actually the next word, Ben. Ben, could you tie this back to the original, <laughs> sorry, the original like center of the debate? Um, sure. This is kind of the scenarios why I enjoy the stories are kind of taking <laughs> office in the, in the, in sure. the tangents, you know, so kind of bring thank us you. back. Yes, thank you. So anyways, this so but uh, the the woman then followed him to his car and then the police arrested them later. And this is a situation where it's domestic violence. Yes. But these people are doing something in which they're both complicit. Now, how does it relate? I don't think I, I actually don't even think the police should have intervened in that situation. Some people do this kind of stuff. And <clears throat> I do believe it's wrong to do that in front of women and children, but it, it, yes, a woman was hurt in front of me and I did not intervene on her behalf. And I think she, you know, was doing this, right? I mean, so I'm saying, I, I don't think it's my, I don't think that I have the authority. If we want to bring it back, I think we would largely say this should be handled by the police. And even they, I think I saw them pull her, pull them over and they, they handcuffed the guy, but you know, it's one of these things. They probably know these people. I don't know them. But I had enough clues to say th this situation is is more complicated than, you know what I mean? Like she wasn't she was being something with him. Of course, a man should never hit a woman. Well, I don't think a man should never hit a woman, but a man shouldn't hit a woman in public like that. Uh, so like in, it's sort of indecent. But uh, I, I do think the police are the proper authorities to handle that situation. She wasn't in danger of her death. Right. I mean, he was just pushed her away and she fell backwards and she was on something, you know, uh, I, I, at least I imagine she was. Would, I literally would, don't care. Well, I'm saying, wouldn't you sort of give that to the police instead of saying, I don't I, know. Andrew, I don't know. This? I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know what the individual situation is, but I do know what Ben Thorpe's general rules for life are, which are to limit your risk to the point of absurdity, even if there's there's any chance that Ben Thorpe himself might get hurt, might get harmed, might in some way 
uh, lose something in the engagement. So here's what I suffer from. It's a terrible affliction that I think most men that I know suffer from. It's called guilt. And so what yeah. happens if you don't do a thing in a no, situation where you could have done a thing, yeah, I know. you tend it's to feel difficult. guilty. Right? Yeah, that's right. And right. why do you feel guilt? What is that guilt telling you? Sometimes a situation happens that you but feel But what is the guilt telling you, Ben? It, 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 it might be telling you. You're saying your emotions are... You're, you what is your, your guilt emotion? telling you? Why do you feel guilty? Guilt, guilt as an emotion tells you that you know you feel like you've done something wrong yeah you feel like you you didn't do something correctly right. you did something wrong right would yep. you feel an overwhelming amount of guilt that you didn't jump in to save the kid i think i would wrestle with guilt that's right right well then you must be doing something wrong ben that's not true just because you have an emotion doesn't mean that their emotion is correct I think any man well, you know, or woman is, who accidentally well, runs over a God, Do you a think child. that God gave you guilt because he didn't want you to understand, right? That that's, your, God, own, that's your own internal self, your soul telling you, see, this Ben, is the problem. you should have jumped in, Ben. Why did you just Why did you just let her float away while she was screaming hysterically, Ben? Right. And, right. We've all been in situations like that. Sometimes you feel like, well, could I have done something, right? I've been in situations like that. And you do wrestle with that. And you're saying, was I a coward? Was I, yes. you know, watching yes, out for myself? So that's nice. That's a nice little insult. I I, I just think, it was, Andrew, it was it's called life. That's, it's cowardice, Ben. I'm sorry. I've it's in, cowardice. Okay. I've intervened in situations in which I later thought, like, I shouldn't have intervened. It was, you know, it was a Are situation we sure? because so far we have, uh, you know, men smack. But let's go with this okay. and everything let's else in between while Ben away. just okay. sits there and looks. Okay, Andrew, your penis is much larger than my I think penis. that the okay, reason you trust authority so much is because you have to trust authority. You have and to you do too. You don't feel like you're capable of handling any situation that might slightly be risky or dangerous. I don't think I'm ha capable of handling any situation at I all. I don't either, yeah. Ben. I agree with you. I handle many situations that are dangerous. I have in the past. But, I mean, we all have this problem. Now, what I would like to point out, as Pedro rightly said, let's get away from, like, I've got a bigger dick than you, right? We can be a little more mature than that. You're and the say, one who keeps bringing up dicks and, and men who are oiled up and shit. I haven't brought any of that up. And we actually only have about three seconds left, gentlemen. So we're going to be moving in the closing statements at this time. Oh, okay. So uh, let's do this again. Ben? I love it. Yeah. Oh, for sure, man. You can definitely come back on some other time okay, for a future debate. Yes. Yeah. So uh, please, Ben, you uh, opened first. So now you have to close first. And you'll get seven minutes for a closing statement. I have the timer on the side. Start whenever oh, you're ready. Minutes. Okay. You got it, Chris? Seven minutes. Great. Not paying attention. Okay, so yeah, we. I started out with um, my point that uh, pursue. We should pursue conspiracy theories less. Not not never, and respect proper authority more. And I think that our world is at a point now where what I talked about in my opening statement, this uh, tendency to distrust and only trust myself, and then even I'm going to start mistrusting myself, has broken our world and caused us all to have problems. With parano excuse me, paranoia, I think in our nation, we have a problem that we have two groups of people uh, who really don't talk to each other and see things in diametrically opposed terms. I think uh, Biden's red speech for, for one group of people was a call to arms. We must destroy the enemy. For another group of people was we need to... Uh, you know, defend ourselves because they're coming to get us. And I think that is where our world has come to in discourse. And so I actually think that situations like this where I can talk with Andrew and I know he gets a little upset and gets a little excited by some of the homoerotic references, but uh, that, th that these are really important things to do and we've got to work this out. We can't just descend into um, little, little uh, groups that are just awaiting the apocalypse. And, um, I would suggest, I meant to give this to Andrew before, I would suggest that, I don't know if I said this, but that our problem could be helped by uh, the, the new sovereign of England, King Charles III. He could maybe intervene as a, an ex-colony um, and you know try to help us work something out. Because I think we all know that we're on the brink of civil war. 
And I also think in Ukraine and Russia that those are Christian people who do not want to be slaughtering each other, but they need to be able to talk to each other. And I think someone like the Pope uh, could could try to sit those people down and, and, and work it out. And I think that it's very difficult to do so, and we can be cynical, and we can say no one trusts anyone, but the only alternative we have is anarchy, and I don't think that we want to go there. And uh, I'd love to keep talking personally. I actually really think, let me just tell you one theory about the internet that I have. I believe much like the Roman Empire was built, we would say providentially, right? The Romans didn't know it, was built so that the gospel could spread quickly to the ends of the empire, not really the ends of the earth. But um, I think the internet has the same role to play. I think the internet is going to allow us to talk to each other as on all levels of authority and as individuals. Um, and I, I'm, I think we're too cynical about the possibilities of doing that. I just went on this live stream a few days ago. That community will not in any way, except, except one guy, Posh, who's a terrific guy, uh, but he'll probably be outed now. So sorry, you know, but like uh, th this, uh, this community just said like, we are suspicious of this person. And I think that leaked unfortunately into my interactions with Andrew. I think Andrew's a terrific guy. I really love a lot of stuff he's doing. I think he's a wonderful young man. And I did not come on this to get into a personal thing with him. I, I, I just think he has trouble trusting me and that, and that's fine. We had a good time. I had a great time. I, I uh, come from a generation, I think where, where men could spar a little more uh, and take it. It was a rough Irish neighborhood. I'm not Irish, but uh I, I, I love my experience. I'll, I'll let it go at that. Thanks so much to to all of you. And uh, come to my channel, Ben Thorpe, a.k.a. Abel. We appreciate that closing statement, sir. Andrew, you're up. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let me um, try to make this as abundantly clear as I possibly can. The contrast and difference that I was able to demonstrate and pull out of Ben tonight should be pretty obvious to everybody. The reason that he needs to have some type of uh, close authority in charge at all times and needs everybody around him to respect that authority and absolutely just cherishes authority to the point where he doesn't even want you to really question it, right, is because fundamentally at his core, Mr. Thorpe has shown us that he suffers from what's called a yellow streak. When you're a yellow, when you have a yellow spine and you've got a bad back that way, you tend to allow other people to take care of your problems for you, take care of your issues for you, take care of things on your behalf because you're afraid to do those things. You're afraid. He's so afraid that his own interjection will make a situation worse that he can't even trust himself to interject even when it's necessary. Even his own anecdotes prove this. This is the difference between a bootlicker, okay, and somebody who understands that, yes, there has to be order in society. Yes, things can't be chaos. Yes, there does have to be authorities that are in a, a society in, to some degree that we can adhere to and understand, okay? But there's also something called spontaneous order. And the reason that we have a low trust society does not exist because the lack of bootlickers that are out there. It exists because of the abundance of them, the abundance of people who refuse to do the right thing, even when everybody's telling them not to, even when everybody's telling them to stay in their lane, stay in your place, stay where you fucking belong. Don't intervene. You're just going to make it worse. Those are the men who you need more than anything. That's the real backbone. OK, now I once and have said many times on this program, we deserve better enemies. OK, but after having engaged with Ben Thorpe, I realized that the current crop of enemies that I have, I'd rather have them because they at least aren't yellow. They at least have some guts and they have a little bit of a fucking spine and a little bit of backbone behind them, for God's sakes. If I asked any of them those questions that I asked you, uh, even my enemies would be like, yeah, I'm not going to let a fucking child drown, even if the, the percentile is minimal, because I'd have to live with the guilt for the rest of my life. I'd have to go home and look at my wife and always think, you know, 
could she ever trust me to jump in after my own kid? Or is she going to wonder if I'm going to come home and say, well, the kid died, honey, because, you know, it would have killed both of us probably. That's just insane to me. And that's really not how men operate inside of this, of a strong society. And that's the real difference is that critical thinking and understanding that no, not every conspiracy is correct. Of course not. But understanding too, that you have to go against the grain. You have to question authority. You have to be the person that can be counted on. You have to be the person that can intervene even when nobody else will be. That's what we're missing. We need more of you's been like we need holes in the head brother that's my closing all right thank you gentlemen for that closing statement and at this time ladies and gentlemen we do things a little bit here on the Cru i'm gonna Crucible. grab some coffee real quick sorry sure. Pedro. do your no worries do your thing uh at this point in time i as the moderator who took a couple notes get the opportunity to interact with some of the debaters and go over some uh things that were going in my head after that, we will go over to some super chats and audience, which are uh, full of audiences' questions. We got a lot of super chats, so tonight we can only do super chats. I'm sorry, we're not going to be taking on the general the general questions. So, uh, Ben, uh, my first question: uh, You brought up the Apostle Paul a lot, right? Um, yes. Can you turn, if you have it with you, I can just read it to you. Your Bible to First Corinthians. I trust you. Okay, perfect. I'll just read it out. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 9 for anybody who wants to follow along. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not un inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterous, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor the drunkards, nor relivers, nor will inherit the kingdom of God. Do you agree with that statement in full, Ben? Uh, yes. All right, perfect. Now, that was to make a bedrock, because really, if we're going to say we're all Christians, that's the foundation for what we all believe, and that is the Apostle Paul talking. I want you to sit back and just look at this for a second. I would like to ask you a very clear point in question. After the kid, do you believe that sodomy should be considered a grave sin? I do not know what the senator brings. We now listen to the people of God, what they express. I start getting in reports, as you know, the major general of the Senate. And so reading all of that, in September we made the first draft for the continental meetings which will take place. And I don't think that, uh, uh, first of all, I would never consider sexuality Separated from love. The Bible has taught, and that has taught for 2,000 years, that sodomy is a sin, an abomination to Christ. But the Bible also has said that we should stay with a woman who is an actress. The Bible has said that the uh, sun turns around the earth. So the Bible is after the Jewish invitation to the earth. So the fundamental scriptural teaching on sin. This is not a theological. No, 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 no. It, that is, uh... yeah, I think we get the point. Sure. You oh, want me to react? Muted, oh. Pedro. Well, well, well. Let's think. Let's think about this carefully. Do we trust that man, Ben? After what we read, what the Apostle Paul said about sexual immorality, but we hear the Cardinal condoning sodomy. Do we trust him? Yeah, I, maybe I should have nuanced when I said I agree with that. I agree that those are sins. I don't think we're in the position, and our Lord commands us not to judge individual sinners, right? But those that's a list of sin, not a list of people. And I think the the discussion there was about, I you know, maybe talk differently. A grave sin is one in which you have grave matter, freedom, and knowledge. So you can have those sexual sins are grave matter. But there are many sexual sins that are not necessarily we would call mortal sins. That's what he was saying. Is, is it always a mortal sin to commit this act? And I, I just think I I'm speaking as a Catholic, not as a person. I would say it is not always a mortal sin to commit even a uh, even a an act which is grave matter, which sexuality and life are the are the the number uh, are definitely in that category. I mean, I think in our day and age. 
There are sexual com sins committed all the time because our culture is saturated in pornography and confusion. And I don't think all these people are damned to hell by those acts. Okay, so you would trust that cardinal that was appointed by the Pope. I don't know that cardinal, but yes, I, I think he was he was being put in a trap. And I think that he was trying to nuance. I don't I don't think I heard him anywhere say that sodomy is fine. Okay. Understood. Um, are you familiar at all with Acts chapter 17? Not offhand, but I trust you. Whatever, if yeah, you no worries. Hear. No worries. So there is a point in time where the Apostle Paul, which I would I think you would think his authority is like right there below Jesus because it's the Apostle Paul. He's correct? An apostle. Yeah. Right. Yep. He yep. is giving the gospel to a group of people called the Bereans. And the Bereans, instead of just taking what Paul is telling them, which is the gospel, by the way, as spoon fed milk, you know, they're just receiving it. They test what he says by the scriptures day and night. And at the end, Paul exalts them as the most honorable. Do you think in that moment that was a blind trust that they were exercising or was it? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. We're going to have, ex have to examine what you're telling us. Absolutely, but they examined it against another authority. I assume these were Jews. This, yes, right. So, so their authority, proper authority, was what we would call the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. And so they they asked, "Yeah, does this match up?" And Paul, I think, explained how it matched up. Paul got it wrong at first, of course, as well, right? I mean, until he was knocked off his horse, he got Correct. it wrong. And um, yeah, I'm not the the authority of Paul. We hold because we know he's an apostle. They didn't know who he was. They didn't realize he was an apostle. He didn't have to to strangers. He didn't have that authority. Gotcha. And then Andrew, I had a question for you. Actually, it, there was only one moment where I was in kind of some slight disagreement with you here. Honestly, um, you gave him the scenario where he's interacting with the authorities and they are accosting your wife, right? If I were to intervene in that situation, I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, I would be escalating uh, the situation very much more highly. I wouldn't just be ending up face down alongside my wife on the ground. Do you think that's a smart thing to do? Or do you think you should just get involved with as, as much like I maybe I'm being looking into the situation too you. deep? Well, I don't believe you. I don't believe that if uh, cops were kicking the shit out of your wife in front of you that you could be restrained. I don't even think it's possible. Cor correct. Correct. So well, then, then what are you even yeah. talking about? Then what's the question even, you know, the question. I mean? Well, the question is who cares if it, even if it would yeah. escalate it, you wouldn't no, be no. able to help yourself. Would you? Oh no, no. I'm saying I would probably escalate. I, I would be honest and, and candid with you and say, I would escalate to deadly force. Because well, these are no, armed no, men wouldn't. coming into no, my house. No, you didn't even just say that. You're just, that's absurd. It's just an absurd hypothetical. You would never do that. Right? We would, we would never do that, Pedro. Yeah, don't, I would never. Don't do. Yeah, you would never do that. So, but yes. if, but okay. it, it, you probably could, couldn't restrain yourself from doing something, right? Yes. It okay. would go, I, I, I would think I would go crazy if someone put their hands on Leslie. Yeah, I it, would. Well, yeah. I would, I would think that that would be the natural reaction. From a devoted, loving husband, seeing their wife being harmed, regardless of the costume that the person was wearing who was harming them, right? Yeah. So, so Ben, now that we're outside of the debate, why, why would you actually stand by and do nothing? Oh, you can't hear me? Yeah, he's got no audio. Ah, Okay. Put My in a bad. private chat that he probably disconnected his ears. Okay. Is it coming through there? Yeah, I can hear it. Is that Grace? Can you hear me, Grace? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. A ask your dad. Can he explain why he would no, not no, no, intervene? No, we need to get his audio sorted out. Oh, okay. Can you tell him his audio? He might have disconnected his head jack. Yeah, I'm. I. I I'm looking at the headphone jack or right now. Disconnect it and reconnect um, it. Yep, reconnected. Okay, uh, can you? I'm, back. Can, I, I'm here. Yep. Oh, you here? Can, you yep. can hear us now. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. 
Thank you, Grace. <laughs> she exists. <laughs> I exist, everybody. She said she was me. She exists. Right. Check can her you out hear on us my now? YouTube channel. I can hear can you. Can you hear us? Oh, you can hear us yeah. now. Now, finally. Yeah, it, just, it just cut out. I don't know why. Yeah. So, so last question. Why would you ever not? Like, I, I need to get into your mind. What makes you say, this thing is happening to my wife in front of me. I'm not going to intervene. You're talking to me? When would I not yes. intervene? Why? I, I, Give us the why. Some... You're muted. You muted yourself, Ben. All right. I think we're going to move on into audience questions, I think. Yeah, we got yeah. a lot of super chats to get through. Exactly. All right. Uh, first one, coming from Well Emmanuel for $100 from Mexico. So 100 pesos, actually. So like 50 cents or something like yeah, that. 26 cents. No, we just... Yeah. <laughs> something stupid. No, no, no. They, they, they're actually... D decent sized super chats don't get me wrong we just like to make fun of well emmanuel because he's our friend so it's, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate all the help you yeah. give us sir we appreciate all of the 26 cents you <laughs> said brother we do. arrogance disguises humility respect proper authority assumes you know which one is proper he may not even realize his position is more relativistic than he thinks. I think that one's to you, Ben. Do you want to interact yeah. with that at all? That is a problem because we have to decide, like in the Christian world, who is the proper authority? Is it the Protestants? Is it the East, East or Eastern Orthodox? Is it the Roman Catholics? Is it the Muslims? If we go outside, right? This is a problem. And we are left to seek. And we only have our minds um, to do so and our consciences. And it's a difficult problem. It's why our churches, all Christians should unite. Jesus told us to, you know, he, he, he prayed that we would be one. <laughs> and it's a problem. Uh, yes, it's, it's difficult, and, but you should be careful and, and try to seek as honestly as you can. But it's, it's a problem. Right. Uh, from Two Acre and a Bear, $5. Thank you so much for your donation, sir. What are your thoughts on Jay Dyer to Ben? Yeah, I've watched a little bit of Jay Dyer. I actually have become friends with Posh Redneck, who's been on this channel. Wonderful uh, S Serbian, I think I'm allowed to say Serb guy. And um, he's introduced me to a lot of uh, the criticisms of the Catholic Church from the Orthodox. I think a lot of them are legitimate. I don't think it, I don't think it cannot be overcome. I don't think I think well, we have a lot to gain and we've been arrogant. Well, you should ask him about ecumenism then. Yeah, I, I know he's hostile. He's hostile to the church, but I... Well, no, you should ask him about ecumenism, your belief that all Christians should just unite under one one, one flag. I mean, yeah, right. under the Orthodox flag, but no, man, it, well, uh, anything else, is it's, it, that's ecumenism. Right, we need to talk. And the, the patriarchs... You see Pedro these... down there? I like Pedro down there a whole hell of a lot more than I like you, and I won't... Uh, I won't... Nice. I don't sit. I don't sit with Pedro, and we don't. We don't. We don't pray together. We don't do these things. Do you think it would yeah. be great if our children only had one united church to encounter instead of this whole? You know. Well, they already do. It's called. It's called. It's called orthodoxy. You can anytime. Anytime you can come over. It's always funny when we talk about uniting. Why don't you come over here and unite with us then? <laughs> well, who's the bishop of who's the bishop of Rome, Andrew? Who's the successor of Peter? It's not you. <laughs> no, it's not. Me. It's not. <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Uh, two point two acres and a bear for another five dollars. Reno should be a deep into life sentence for pre premeditated mass murder. I guess he's uh, referencing a um a, an event there. Um, Wait, say it again. Oh, let me get it back. Reno should be a should be deep into a life sentence for premeditated mass murder. He's talking so about I, Janet Reno. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. Yeah. He didn't have the first name in there. She's a she's a complete fucking bitch and deserves to be behind bars for the rest of her fucking life. For what I wouldn't she say did. stuff like that. I wouldn't say stuff like that. That she deserves to be behind bars. Well. I if, I, I don't if know. dirty progressives can sit on here for two fucking years and say that Trump deserves to be behind bars every breath that they take, 
I think I can say it about Janet Reno and it's okay. Yeah, okay. And also I can say she's a stupid bitch. I'm going to say both of those things together. So she's a stupid bitch and she deserves to be behind bars. Okay. You can say that. I just don't think you should. You're a Christian. You should respect authority. She's not in authority. She's not in authority. Hang on. She's not in authority. She was. That's why you're. She's not in authority right now. I know. Yeah, good. So now we can put her behind bars and not respect her authority. Is that okay, Ben? Well, no one has earned your, everyone has to independently earn your personal respect, right? You don't Only if they want me to respect them. Inside the commons, they'll get respect. Meaning that I'll, if they say good morning, I'll say good morning back. I've been in positions of authority. It's not always easy to please everybody. And but Ben, but Ben, I I showed well, you that you clip. <laughs> but Ben, I showed you that clip. Yep. I know for but and you answered you do you would not trust that cardinal. No, I didn't say that. Oh wait, I you said, said you I, would trust the cardinal. I said he was. I I don't know the man personally. I don't know the context, but I think he was right. articulating a, a church teaching, and he was he was being put in a trap. Right. And but listen, but listen to what Andrew just told you. You just said, I don't know him. Right. Andrew's saying, I don't know him. Therefore, I'm not giving them any weight in the realm of I Her, trust Reno. Them. Right. We're talking about Reno. I don't know. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm no. sorry. That, that just we we'll just get through the super. I'm an old yeah. man. That's OK. Joe R for thirty three dollars. Thank you for your donation, sir. Trust is built, not given. Do you lock your boot? Do you lock your doors, Benny? Let's see, disrespect. I love it. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, some, it depends on the area I'm in. Got it. Wait, so you, I don't you demand, don't... <laughs> I don't demand that every police department in every town that I live in personally earn my respect. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you don't, you don't really have to, Ben, because you can lock your doors. Right. You can lock your doors and try to keep yourself safe at night. You're taking proactive measures outside of authority to make sure that you're secure because you don't have total faith that authority can do that for you. Isn't that amazing? I lock my doors sometimes and sometimes I leave my doors open depending on the neighborhood and whether I trust my neighbors. Well, right. Oh, thank you, Ben. Thank you. So the trust has to be earned. And if they've earned the trust, you don't lock the doors. And if they haven't earned the trust, you lock the doors. I would say generally it's a good idea to lock your doors, yeah. But I don't demand everyone in my neighborhood to prove to me that they're worthy of my trust. I just make a general Then assessment. you wouldn't lock your doors, Ben. <laughs> then you wouldn't lock your and doors, And you don't bro. either, Andrew. <laughs> you don't either. Well, Emmanuel. I know, but that's, for my, another, but that's oh. my point, Ben. Are we Don't having a great it? time? I'm having a great this time. That's my point. You're having a good time. I like to see you laugh. You came on here. You're angry. And you called me a bunch of names. You got to take out your daddy issues on me. And now you can see I'm a good man. I don't recall calling you any names. What names did I call you? Well, there was some. There was some. Distance. You can't think of one, though? <laughs> Not well, even one? Well, I'll leave it to the chat to say whether you were respectful of me. Well, no, Jack, you said you I called you. Call, well, wait, the, you said I called was a you lot names. Of hostility. What are the names? A lot what, of hostility. What names did I call you? Well, you you insulted my wife. My, you insulted me. You said I wasn't a good protector of my family. You um, said that I am a, uh, a, boot, a boot licker, that I'm a coward, that I'm the type of person that That's you true. That is one name I did call you. I even your, call you a boot licker. You, you said that I was the, I was someone who you despise more than even your worst enemy <laughs> and i love it yeah, buddy that, that, love that, it. Men, that we're gonna mentality. be great friends yeah let's take over true. the internet with love with love let's talk older men need to talk with younger men like you who have gotten you know angry and i you keep I, saying I you keep it. saying but sir you keep saying that but andrew has like five children you do know that right he, well is he as old as me he's 50 years old no I don't oh. need to be. I don't need to be. See, he could, but he. But he. But, <laughs> but you're. Me, sir. Look, look, but you. Me, sir. Brother, well, I've I call. Been I've been adulting for a long time, brother. I'm good. Exactly. I'm all exactly. Set. You. You keep. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm his father. I have any authority. No. No. Him. No. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. But you keep kind of doing this thing. What? Where I catch it, kind of. And I. I don't know if it's subliminal. If you're doing it on purpose, but you kind of put him at a lower rank of maturity than yourself. I at think one he point. 
Andrew Thorpe. Yeah. And I think I should call him Andrew. I think that's generally how pe- men about more than about 15 years apart. You know what? I, hang on. I completely <laughs> agree with this point. Go fuck yourself, Mr. Thorpe. See, there we go. God. Well, Emmanuel, for I love Andrew. I love pesos. Pedro. You guys are great. I love being here. Let's do it again. Ben, you are the most one of the most confusing characters I've ever had on the show. I'm not gonna lie. But am I? I'm a nice person, right? Am I a nice person? Ben, you are definitely like nice you. Ben, 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 people have said I'm too nice. No, I think you're too nice. I think. I, oh, thank you. Uh, you're, the point, guy, Pedro, you're the nicest guy. You're the nicest guy I've ever Stop needling seen Mr. In my Thorpe. Life. Stop needling Mr. Thorpe. We got a lot of super chats to go. Yeah, through. I say. I always say yeah. Pedro is such a wonderful <laughs> gotcha. person. Pedro, you should be our next president. You're such a wonderful person. So sweet. I would never sell my soul to the to the, that that seat. No. No. We'll get we'll get the internet behind you. There are men far greater with more fortitude than me that need that seat. Um, well, Emmanuel, you for another like hundred pesos, conspiracy yeah. theories can lead us to a spiral out of reality, and so can real conspiracies. Instead of vague trust graph models, promote critical thinking and discernment. I think that's a good thing to go. Uh, Joe R for another thirty three dollars. <laughs> oh no, that's a bad one. That's a bad. I can't read that. I'm sorry, Joe. But thank well, you for the thirty three dollars. Read it. Then rephrase if it's it. Towards, it I, okay. If it's an insult towards me. Read it. I, you don't you're, you're, you can take it. Okay. Guy. Okay. Does Absolutely. Benny? Okay. Yeah. Does Benny sit while he pees? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your honest answer, sir. David, for $5, would Ben respect Hitler because he was the authority at that time and place if he lived in that community? That's yes. a great question. Yes. You know, Pope Pius XII, I believe, was the pope at the time. And he signed uh, what I think is called the Munich Concordat. Just say Concordat. Yes, no, 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 babe. You, see, babe, yes. this is another problem. Yeah. Questions that are easy. <laughs> Like when Andrew threw you the no would I would I protect my wife scenario, you say yes. Would I obey Hitler? You say no. <laughs> Just say I no, respect, Ben. This is I not hard. I yeah. I would if I I would have vote, voted against Hitler, but he uh, at at first it, when he was the uh, whatever chancellor of Germany, he did have that authority. Right. So yes, right, Ben. Yeah, I, I yes. think I think I would yeah. we would have tried to work something out as, as a populist. Yeah, you would have you would have worked something out with Hitler, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I. I <laughs> he would have had you over for tea, you know, and some uh, like vegan sandwiches or something, right? <laughs> you would have just worked it out. He would have I, avoided. He would have avoided all of World War II if you were there, Ben. <laughs> well, I Man. I don't know. I mean, if I was a <laughs> if I was a soldier in in. In Hitler's army, and I had the opportunity. Which most to stab certainly you them. would have been if the authority had drafted you, right? Yeah, I mean, but, uh, would I have sabotaged my own like side, my own men, and killed my own men? I think you could make the argument for that. I, I think a lot of people didn't. There have were people a full who doing. There were people who doing that. Who were doing that, right. sir? There I were people who were infiltrating the structure. Of very brave the men. Yeah, and they only yeah. had they had a small percentage of of uh, of actually getting out of it alive too you know maybe two three four percent i don't think everyone in the army it was the very German small army. very small the resistance that uh had a had a chance of succeeding it was a very small chance of success but they did it anyway and we call then, those we you know what we call those men we call them heroes and then if ben, i was ben ben I was, you need to understand the, uh, yeah yeah go for it if i was on the enola gay right the 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 plane that was sent to destroy hiroshima I think I would have had an obligation to sabotage that plane and not let humanity do that. As well as if I was a German firebombing the cities in Germany, you cannot kill women and children. Cannot do it. I mean, sometimes if it's a military target. Well, yeah, well you would let it happen, though. You'd just take it to the world court afterwards, after the war, and be like, hey, they did these bad things. No, I think you would be obliged to disobey those orders. But, of course, they would just find someone else to do it. But I, I think you'd yeah, be so, in a I mean, what's situation. even the point, then? Like, you might as well just do it. They're just going to find someone else anyway, right? Well, I mean, I do think the people in, on that mission could say it really wasn't our choice. Um, some of them felt guilty. You mean they, they would not. say we were only following orders, Ben? Right, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. From legitimate authority. <laughs> they were only following orders, Ben? <laughs> right, right. Andrew. No, not right, Ben. Come on, man. <laughs> the debate. Does anybody agree dude. with me? 
No. Is this a debate or are you mod? I mean, you're supposed to be moderating, Pedro. And you're, you're no, the mod that. hat's off. The mod, the debate oh. is over. It's in the the closing statements were made. Now I'm happy. I'm happy. To now we're back in. We're we're out of the matrix. We're back in reality. And you can say, I th you you could, sir, take a note here. There are good moments perfect. in a debate after it's over where you say, I think while we were in that moment. I had a little bit of a heat behind me, but now I think I was wrong. No, I would sure, actually defend yeah. my wife. Yeah. No, I'm not going to support Hitler. You know, the yes, I dive in the pool no, for the he's child. Gonna, he's going to do all of those things. We got to get through the super chats. Page. I'm not there yet. Gotcha. I'm not there yet, but I, I, I do agree that I could Ben's say something. He's only following orders that. from the FBI right now. Leave him alone, Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is a, this Dude. is Langley. You guys never been? Yo, here? that's a I'm question, Andrew. A Andrew, feet underground. Did, did that not run through your mind, Andrew, for a hot minute? Like this guy has to be a spook. CIA. <laughs> no, they got it. It's great here. You yeah. get all the food you want. You know, <laughs> all right. Psyop. Yeah, we can that. tell, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. I glow in the dark. Right. No, we can tell you get all. I the take food that you as want. a compliment, Go ahead, Pedro. Let's yeah. get. Come on, Joe. We R. Get to the <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who could Joe be this R. much of a genius? Joe Who R. For ninety nine dollars. In the words just of you, man. Yeah. Just in you the words you. of my forefathers, fold him like a chair. <laughs> sir for your 99 dollars donation we very much appreciate it joe r maddie uh slash digital minefield for five dollars i thought matt slick was the worst debater of all time but ben has easily claimed that title <laughs> this is an absolutely abysmal performance <laughs> you know you love it you take it on the chin very well ben uh, <laughs> at least I'm, i have i'm one of the something ist the worst i'll take best or worst just not boring in the middle Gotcha. No, nope, you're not going to take that for sure. <laughs> two point two point two acres and a bear. What's your ideal level of gen control, Ben? Gen control? I don't know what that term means. Like, gen is an your... alcohol. Gin? Gin, yes. G-I-N. How much do I drink? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't drink much. I had cigarettes and coffee. Which is terrible because I don't sleep. I've been, I've been, I've been, I'm on very little sleep. I'm so excited to be here. You know, I get nervous. Gotcha. No booze. Georgie, there. Georgie Porgy for five dollars. Ben Thorpe might be the most unlikable and annoying guest you've had on the Crucible. Incredible. Woo! I'm a super villain. I'm not a troll though. It's a super, um... super villain makes implications <laughs> about things that you're not for sure. Okay, I'm a jerk. No, nope, can not, you grant not, me that? No, nope, I'm annoying. Not even a jerk. No, nope. I'm very annoying. I can grant you that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Jor R for another nine dollars and eleven cents this time. In particular, I appreciate it, sir. If a new authority arises and overtakes the old authority, but is still around, who do you trust and obey, Ben? Right, that's a difficulty in times of war. You know, uh, in there, I think it's called the Great Schism in the Western Church, where you had a pope. And he his election was dicey, and then another pope was elected, and then they they got together and elected a third pope, and none of them were able to resolve who was the pope. So a council was called, and they installed a fourth pope and told the other guys to cut it out. But it's tricky. It's tricky when you're in a situation like that. I think America in that situation, it's very tricky. How are we going to do this? All right, Jim Bob, if you can hear me, just send that super chat in once again using at the crucible and I'll catch it so that I can put it up for you. Um, next one coming from May. Oh, I found it made by Jim Bob. Five dollars. Ben, would you have trusted Jimmy Seville with your kids <coughs> as he what as he was a dear friend of your late queen? Uh, I mean, I can't know in the circumstances. The guy, when you look at it, he looks creepy. It looks like, how would anyone? How about Prince Andrew? Yeah, I mean, I think he, I, I don't know Prince Andrew. I, I'm not in that position, but I, I do think, you know, I don't know. Would Epstein, I have gone to Epstein, Epstein Island? Island? I don't think, I think I would, I, I think I like Donald Trump would have said there's something wrong here. But I don't think that everyone who went to Epstein Island was, you know, I think some people were there for conferences and didn't know the situation. But maybe they did. I don't know. Then get off and say, hey, what's that big building over there that looks like a house of worship? And he was like, oh, you know, that's where we do like 
satanic rituals and have ritualistic sex with little girls, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, if you want to talk about conspiracy theories, that I think everyone agrees, Epstein, Epstein suicide. That just doesn't that doesn't wash. I, I don't think even the mainstream people would say that. Well, that's not really a conspiracy theory, then, is it? It's conspiracy mainstream, meaning it's not it's not a theory. Well, it's a theory. I mean, no one has any proof. I mean, no, fishy. we have a lot of evidence, don't we? Yeah, yeah, but uh, there's no definitive proof. We never have proof, Andrew. We never have proof. We're human beings. We're limited. We <laughs> might get things wrong. 2.2 acres and a bear. Thank you for your $5 donation. Gun control is all it says. Maybe maybe we can adapt this into a question for Ben. Yeah, ben. yeah well, let me answer first with yeah. my stance on guns. You should have a lot of them as many of them as you want, whatever type that you want, whenever you want them for no good particular reason other than the fact that you like them. I don't think that's good. Well, I mean, I, my friend said the other day he was walking into McDonald's and this guy open, open carrying. My and, God, he couldn't even enjoy his cheeseburger. If we're all open carrying all the time. How are we ever going to trust each other, though? Right. Don't we have to trust right. people who are carrying guns? Don't we want that high trust society? I don't want to be. I don't want my kids to be in a society in which everyone is open carrying. Why? Guns. If you trust them. Well, well, that's maybe, not what this is about. Right? What, what well, if you wait, look no, at it? From... I mean, I think that that is what this is about. So, okay, like, sure. uh, I've had. So I have a shooting range in my property. It's downright looked like you know. There's been forty people here shooting at one time, right? Okay, sure. Whole I house filled to the brim with guns all over the place. Yeah, he barely get through the living room without tripping over one. What was okay. the problem with that? Well, if everyone's armed to the teeth, it, it's it, it can flare up very quickly. You know, I, I would you like to see like uh, the Black Lives Matter people like armed to the teeth? Yeah, I don't remember seeing Black Lives Matter people armed to the teeth shooting. Any right. I saw a bunch of armed people run those maniacs out multiple times that's what i saw i, I think it's i a saw when they went to the wrong places where they shouldn't have been that men with ar-15s were like get the fuck out of here and they left wasn't that amazing that yeah. suddenly you had some type of equalizer against a massive mob of people who wanted to kill you for the color it's, of your skin it's a dangerous situation i understand their their desire to defend themselves but it's a dangerous situation right it would I have been a way more dangerous situation if they weren't <laughs> armed and could have defended themselves. Maybe, but you can make the argument that then make it. They escalated. Then it. make it. Well, you make the argument that if you bring a, a weapon and point it at people, you're escalating the against situation. a mob that's there to hurt you. You think that I don't weapon, think it was there to you think hurt that having a weapon. Particular. Do you think that Kyle Rittenhouse did, did anything wrong? Do you think that Rittenhouse was in the wrong because he defended himself against an armed mob of lunatics? I think what happened there was self-defense. Whether That's I right. think it was prudent for him to go there with an AR-15, I think is a good question. I think his heart was in the right place. Well, they should have just I, trusted him, and there wouldn't have been a problem. He was not the proper authority, but the proper authority wasn't doing their job. Oh, the proper the authority was. wasn't doing their job. So who was the right. proper authority? I guess it was Mike Makes Right at that point, wasn't it? The police. And you had an anarchic situation. There was I no think. police. Well, I think they were there, but they they right. They, they were they the proper authority wasn't back. doing its proper authority job, I agree. was it? I agree. So then, who's yep. it left to, Ben? Right. Then you have a situation of anarchy, and I understand people who want to defend their property in that situation. Mm. I do want to defend their own lives. Want to defend, so they can't just rely on authority, can they? And and right. even when you have authority who's in place that you say we're supposed to rely on, they fail miserably often, and then you're left with oh. what? You're left running through the streets for your life with an AR-15 and hoping to God you make it home. That's what you're left with. Well, I wouldn't characterize that as American life right now, but I understand that if this type of thinking takes over left and right, that is what we're all going to do. That be was doing. what American like life was like in major metropolitan areas just two years ago. <laughs> uh, yes, I understand. Those were tough situations. I understand the L.A. riots that the Koreans looked like the next target and they defended themselves. But I... Uh, you know, it can get dicey if if you escalate violence with violence, you know, but they didn't they were defending themselves. I think it's a good option. I can't I've been in situations I'm I'm six, eight. I've been in situations where I have to pretend I can fight and I'm a tough guy um, to to make someone think. But if it but if it blew up, I, 
I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm not, I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. Ben, believe- what, yeah. Yeah. Ben, if you, I'm not what sure if you what my think, point is. Ben, what if you take it up, up from a different angle? If everybody in society is armed to the teeth, don't you think the average person would walk out the door with the mentality of, I'm going to treat every person I have an interaction with with a little bit more respect so that I don't get shot? Could that uh, could that be a good deterrent and, and make a, a better society elicit, uh, you know, a better decorum overall to each other? Because, you know, at any moment, if you works. trigger the other person, they could shoot you. Yeah, this is the kind of theory of mutually assured destruction, right? That if we all have guns pointed at each other's heads. I mean, you're saying your your view of human nature is that human nature is good. And I, 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 I think it's a tough situation. I, I don't think that. I think I would be nervous. I wouldn't want my children in a society in which was which everyone was armed. I don't think okay. we would any longer have restaurants, and I don't think people would go to public places because it would be terrifying. <laughs> Why would it be okay. terrifying? Uh, if everyone's got a gun, you don't think that's a little bit of like a world in which people have lost, you know, trust? I, I, no. Have you ever been on a military base? What's the difference? What what changes you fundamentally as the person you are by strapping a sidearm on? Do you suddenly lose who you are? No, I understand. I, I understand that people have so guns for various reasons. So all these same fine. people that you're advocating that we have high trust for, they don't change just because they're carrying a gun. Well, let's say you were in a McDonald's with your kids and there's a kind of sketchy guy and he's open carrying. Wouldn't you wouldn't it make you a little nervous? Not a bit been there but it made you a little nervous no okay don't even think twice about it literally don't even think twice about it what if a whole group hell of sometimes i'm in? like sometimes i might be like oh hey man you got a glock 17 i love those and he's like, that's yeah. exactly what i was about he's to like, say yeah. that's my second like, thought. It's, a, it's a great fucking sidearm and let me tell you some more about it sometimes a motherfucker he unloads it and hands it to me and we talk about it and it's a great fucking time what a great icebreaker. More people should open carry. All right, Maddie, for the next $5, we appreciate you. Um, does Benny really feel safe leaving his doors unlocked? Is he not worried about the Rhode Island mob coming after him about that zoning <laughs> issue? <laughs> you know, I looked up because I had to figure out before that court case where who owned this property well i was pretty sure who owned it and i ended up looking up on the records and you, you end up in an alley in in the east side of providence it's all you know it's all it's it does none of it makes any sense so that was like that's the answer you get but um i i think that the you know we all have seen the movies about the mafia they don't hit they don't hit ch- uh, family people it's only people who are in their way but i would love it if we couldn't could avoid talking about this because i i I do respect the mafias like you know i i do have that respect they're not a legitimate authority but i don't want to don't worry they're gonna know from this conversation they can come (laughs) over and you'll shine their shoes and give them a nice cup of coffee work out your differences with (laughs) that's right i if the mafia showed up i would say let's work it out guys yeah Hand me the shoes. I just Let's want to them. say to the mafia or whoever, if there may be any mafia people here that I uh, respect, respect you. <laughs> hey, great start. Ben, when you're six foot eight, <laughs> is it really hard to find knee pads that fit? <coughs> for the, for what? Prayer? When you're six foot eight. Yeah. Is it hard to find knee pads that fit when you're six foot eight? Your knees don't get any bigger. Some of your organs get bigger, and I'm sure you'll speculate upon which ones those are. And let me tell you, it's not necessarily. It doesn't work out that way. Gotcha. Grace Thorpe for $20. Thank you for having my dad 20 bucks. on. I thought he did a good job. Good here. Haha. <laughs> Love this channel. Hey, Grace, we appreciate your viewership. Yeah, you're very you for- sweet, Grace. Thank you so much for helping us fix the audio pro- problem. We certainly appreciate that. Wonderful, yeah, girl. You're awesome. Love her very much. Nothing but you. ones in chat for Grace. She was great. We all know it. Put the number one in chat. Make sure you show Grace that we are Grace respecters here. She was so nice to everybody. Gotcha. And I think we are all out of super chats, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, ones. There we go. 
hitting us with the ones. One, one. Look at all those ones. All for you, Grace. Thank you so much for being so kind. <laughs> hey, gotcha. she wants to she wants to do a debate on your channel, all female, and I'm she wants sure. to debate the topic: Should women ab uh, give back to men the right to vote? Wouldn't that be fascinating? And she takes the pro. Wouldn't that be a fascinating debate? All females, except the moderator, can be male. I think the, we had you want to see angry chats people. in that, didn't we? Didn't we, Pedro? Are you sure? Uh, I'm not. I'm. I, I would have to think about it. I need some time. Oh wait, I think we have another one that came in. One second. Joe R for nine dollars. I have a conspiracy that Ben is not six eight. One inch taller than <laughs> Owen Benjamin. Gotcha. Can't prove All it. right. Can't prove it. Ben, do you have any non-cringe words of wisdom? <laughs> no, there's two more super chats. Hang on, you missed them. Let me pull them oh, up. You, you found them? Yeah. I do have uh, I do have a, a hashtag. Hang on, hang on. Thing. Oh. Dude, weed. You missed that one. Tobacco. <laughs> Bad. Dude, weed. Oh, Dude, nice. weed. Thank you. 420. Yes. Thank hang you on. for your $4.20 donation. Uh, yeah. Did Pedro Pedro, hang on. Because Jim Bob just said, fuck, you missed my chat again. So no, I, I got it. I got he it. He said he sent another one in. What? Yeah. I saw I saw you get the first one. There, I you missed Jim this Bob. one. I can see it. Do you I get scared when work. people conceal carry? Well, ben? you wouldn't know if they conceal carry, right? Uh, well, I don't, I don't understand, though. That's you're, I think you're missing his point. That is his point. So what he's saying is that your fear is all coming from your brain. All of those people who are carrying those guns openly could be carrying them concealed. You'd have no frame of reference and you just right. trust them anyway. Yeah, I mean, I. So why saying, is why would the, why would people? the thing being seen so that he's showing you that he's armed be different than the thing being concealed? Why does that a trust breaker for you? Well, I mean, I don't I don't have knowledge of who's con carrying concealed weapons. So if I knew a bunch of people in McDonald's had concealed weapons, I, I suppose I would also feel right, but I don't okay. know. Well, I mean, you if understand. I knew someone was, if I knew someone at McDonald's was a uh, mass murderer, I would feel, but I don't know that from looking at them. Right, but that's his whole point. He's saying that it's feelings, not, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's All of those people it, could be carrying guns, and likely at least one of them probably is carrying a gun. If you're in a concealed carry state and you have no idea, it's just the presence of the thing literally makes you feel unsafe. But that doesn't make any sense because the presence yeah. of the thing is there regardless. Logic, yeah, I, right? I understand the open carry is in some ways more assuring than concealed carry. Yeah, I understand that. Well, because at least you're saying this is. It's easier to get a, an open carry permit, right? No, you concealed. don't need a permit to open carry. I think in Rhode Island you do. Well, I don't know about that specific state, but I doubt it. Uh, almost, <coughs> almost every state that I'm aware of, you can open carry to some degree or another. Even in California, you just have to carry it unloaded. In California, we're a, we're a blue, the, the, the you know the point. We're we're a blue state, so I'm sure it's very restrictive. But then, did Buzz play golf on the moon? This is the this was the litmus test. Buzz Aldrin, did he play golf on the moon? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't. Gotcha. For, ten, for 10 pounds, Neon Noir says, wholesome show, to be honest. I mean, to be honest, hey. I agree. All right. Hydronic All right. Bear for five Canadian dollars. That's two toonies and one loony, says Ben. It sure seems like you follow a lot of people you disagree with. Why? I don't know what that means. Follow on the internet. Yeah, he's saying that he thinks that you're chasing clout. I am chasing clout. Yeah, I love you guys. I think you guys are superstars, and I uh, I want to chase cl clout right to to take over the internet with you. Take over the. <laughs> I think internet. you guys are stars. I think I love Jim Bob's community. I love Posh. I, I think you guys are terrific, and we should. Uh, I'm not trying to take over anything. Well, I blame I, I blame. Um... I blame Jim Bob for, <laughs> for, for, 
not not anything in his community that goes wrong or anything else that goes wrong. I blame him for being close friends with Posh. And right. we all know that Posh is the reason everything yeah. goes wrong. We all know that that's true. I, I talk with him first. Yeah, I know. So the conspiracy now, widened. I did want to just make this abundantly clear that Jim Bob's just got done saying in chat. Um, oh, I was clicking it up when you click oh, okay, it up. Okay, go ahead. Time. Click it again. He said, fuck off. You're not welcome in my community. I just wanted <laughs> to let you know. Just wanted to make But your make... chat wants me back. There was a guy today who put in T and then an H O R and P. Yeah, but, but I would, I was but talking... I respect Jim. I respect Jim. Do you remember Jim. earlier when I was talking about my moral foundations and feeling guilt? The second I'm done with this, I'm going to feel a lot of that guilt. You're going to feel that dirty. much. Not nearly as dirty? much as I probably should. But, but because uh, you but were disrespectful, unlike Pedro, Pedro, my man, you were disrespectful. You'll feel that's not what guilty. I'm going to feel. The guilty. Uh, plus, I don't think he's going to feel guilty about that at all. <laughs> some of you the excitement, some of the excitement about the oiled men. Also, you'll feel a little dirty. Time to take a cold. Shower. I do feel uh, dirty about hearing about the oiled up men from you already. I Ladies don't. and gentlemen, it's been a wonderful night. Thank you all so much for showing up to the crucible. We appreciate it. Make sure that you uh, become members of the channel. Yes. Uh, hit the join. And uh, we've been increasing our membership here. We're super appreciative of that. It really makes us uh, or makes the production value go way up, helps us so that we can afford to make sure that Pedro and his wonderful wife can go out and have a steak dinner every once in a while. You see all the work that this poor bastard has to put in just to get guys like Ben Thorpe on here. Holy <laughs> shit. We're out. Have a good night. Thanks, Bro. guys.